hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen, episode number 189.3, Zen, Moonbeam Ignite. That is how the night is going. We are on episode three, part three of tonight. Welcome back to the stage, uh, Denny. Uh, gonna send out quick invites back to the others that sort of got dumped. How are you? Are you back on online? After I got rubbed? Yeah. yeah, you sound great now. Yeah. Uh, it is good to see. Let's get this back up and running. Um, uh, Going to send out some tweets uh, and some... Uh, er, uh, At least I'm persistent. Yeah, most definitely. You sound like a pretty motivated dude. Uh, do, 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 do. Part three. All right. We could ask, uh, let's see here. Boom. Requested and approve. Uh, to do. We are. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. Pin to profile. All right. We are back at it. Uh, we are back up and running, and we have... Uh, to do, to do, let's see. Invite via DM. Uh, sub. To do. And uh, to do. All right, there we go. Uh, invites are back out to those that were with us, to Graham and uh, Sabine, um, a.k.a. Samantha. Um, all right, so uh, then I, uh, I don't know where I got cut off, um, but uh, yeah, no, uh, Moonbeam. Um, work with the team and, and love what Derek's done and, and is doing. And so really excited to sort of see what that can, what can, that can do, you know? Yeah, most definitely. How's, uh, how's your guys' telegram chat? I'm hopping in here right now. Uh, looks like mostly just, uh, Announcements and stuff, okay. Um, it should be, yeah. So, let me see real quick. Um, doom, 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 doom. Oh, actually, no, never mind. This is just people joining, okay. Wow. <clears throat> um, yeah, so we just had a uh, we had a uh two-hour conversation tonight, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, there's only, uh, you know, right, it's a private group with uh, only 28 members right now. Um, but yeah, no, we, uh, so I, one of the last uh, announcement pieces was um, our uh, me posting the Stella Swap uh, Discord. Um, so that way, if you know you have any direct questions, um, but then also so we could sort of um, 
start, uh, you know, people asking for uh, wins in. Um, and then, uh, you know, want to get that over into the main group as well, if we can. I know you might help with that if, if but I, I'll ask Sun you know, I don't know if you want, I can ask Sun Tzu or if you want to. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him know. He's obviously a busy guy, but um, uh, he definitely holds more clout than I do for sure. So we'll yeah, see. definitely see. And so it's, but uh, yeah, no, I get to, so um, it's sort of, you know, how our, 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 our team members are, are named, you know, our, you know, um, but it, it's, you know, like T Mohammed, um, Aziz and Omar are our four founders. They used to work for facet, which was the largest decks, um, or largest sex, um, in the middle East. Um, and then they wanted to go they wanted to create a DeFi platform and do it better and safer, you know, your keys, your crypto type of style. So that's why they made Stella swap and like the team grew, um, you know, with a couple other guys. Uh, so it's like, uh, you know, uh, Amar, um, uh, uh, Cyan and, and, um, uh, 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 and then you have someone named Taco, and then you have like a Steve. Um, and now we got about 19 people total on the team. Some most, uh, you know, I think, uh, empl- you know, team members 12 through 19 are part timers. Just needed for, uh, you know, UI, some UI stuff uh, if it's needed. But yeah, really trying to build out. Um, we just hit one year of being, you know, being live. We just hit a billion dollars in AMM trades as well. Yeah, I just saw that on on the Twitter page here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I have a meeting and um, meeting with our team members, um, hopefully this Saturday, um, to whitelist Zen um, as a token. And then... um, you know, it's, uh, you know, just trying to do do that piece with it that I can. Um, so, yeah. That sounds awesome, man. I'll be all over that. Let's see if I can find Zen on there right now. Uh, you should just be able to paste in the contract address right now. Oh, I'm in the pools. That might not help. Uh, if you go to, yeah, so it's not whitelisted for any of the pools or Pulsar, but if you go to swap, um, you can uh, paste and then import token in. All right, we're in business. Yeah. So, so does this uh, is this integrated with Pulsar? Would like would this tra- could this trade like be um, possibly uh, routed to a different swap to a different Dex or how how does this no. work? Do you- so yeah, so um, it's all within our our Dex and stuff like that. So if you go look at the. If, if you're on desktop and you see the far uh, right, uh, like so it's sort of in the middle of the page in the top, you'll see Pulsar. Um, and that will take you to the Pulsar page. Um, and then that's where you can make a new new pool. It won't show up. Us- user-generated pools uh, aren't showing up. So one of the things that I'm sort of... Um, defining right now and and i'm working on um one of my teammates is sort of a dgen too and uh he's like hey i I gotta i gotta sort of take a neutral territory but 
these are the arguments you need to pull together for uh, for this person, and these are the type of arguments you need to pull together for this person to get it uh, through. So I'm looking at maybe, you know, one working on getting um, either, you know, whitelist for any pool rather than just, uh, you know, so that any pool that's created uh, can, can show up. And then uh, at the same time, um, you know, uh, that user choice piece, you know, um, people can add to it. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's rather than just looking for just a Zen, Zen pool. So the two pools that I'm going to work to get whitelisted would be, um, an X Stella pool and a Zen pool and then, um, Glimmer and Zen. Um, but one of the things that we could, that, um, if Sun Tzu wanted, you know, it, apply for a grant with Moonbeam uh, that would, you know, could be used to help fund or incentivize a pool and stuff like that as well. Um, you know, so a lock liquidity um, and uh, it would then be, it would be put, bef uh, put in front of the DAO or that, you know, to be voted on. How, uh, hmm. can you go, can you go into more, uh, more detail about that? <clears throat> uh, what the grant process? Yes, correct. Um, so it would be one of those things to where, uh, you know, partially it would be creating, you know, would have to create a, a proposal that, you know, brings TVL. Um. Uh, that brings what TVL kind of, to like what? What kind of numbers do you guys generally work with? Is it kind of a variable thing, or? Yeah. Well, so like, if we wanted to, if if a project wanted to list and, and just you know get it on it, uh, we need about uh, fifty thousand in liquidity total. And then ten thousand for three months. So, um, or it's, it's some projects can we 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 can do for less. Um, and so, it's one of those things that creates liquidity and um, something that will create action from the community as well. Um, right, right. It sounds good, man, but I, I I don't see it happening. To tell you the truth, I don't think yeah. there's fifty thousand dollars worth of Moonbeam Zen out there anyway, <laughs> yeah. or twenty five to say, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Plus, uh, I mean, you've you've heard the story. They don't list and they don't do all that. So it's it's yeah. up to us, you know. Yeah. So it's one of those things to where, um, you know. Um, from, you know, the community, we could create a, a liquidity generating event, you know, where, you know, people are willing to sacrifice Zen for the liquidity pool. Um, and then that, you know, it, that would be, you know, um, that would be the, you know, the start of it. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that could be the piece for it to see if, you know, get, get that result, um, have, you know, a, a target, um, uh, set. We, we did a really good, uh, LGE, um, for Athos and that was really successful. So try to see about doing, you know, uh, getting a proposal together, um, and, you know, uh, before that, um, but then, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it would have to, you know, it's just one of those things where, um, I think that if I can at least get out, get the, a Zen pool whitelisted, 
uh, seeing how much of the community then drives, you know, to add liquidity, to partake in it, um, it, it would be, that would be, uh, um, that would be part of the equation as well, you know? Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that happening. I, 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 you know, I have no idea how involved you guys would want to get just because it's like, I, I personally have no idea how involved the uh, core Zen team would get, uh, you know, I'm leaning more towards like they're, they're not going to get involved, but uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, what, let's crunch some numbers. What, uh, all right, just a second here. I forget you. What'd you say? Like something like 50 grand in liquidity or something. Was that right? Yeah. I think like a 50, 50 kind of thing or. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So let's just, we got to make a lot of assumptions here. So just hop on zen.fyi. Active mints, 1.9 million. So we'll just pretend, theoretically, that all of those are long-term mints. Um, well, so you can do let's two just things. Break it down. So, to, so like, so like one to, mint on one. Mi oh, go ahead. Go to go to moonscan.io. And you can, uh, and then paste in, you, well, you could, I think you can just type in Zen rather than, and it should pop, it should come up rather than just pasting the contract in, uh, Moonbeam Zen. Um, either or will we'll take you to the token page within Moonbeam. And um, uh, one of the, uh, yeah, because I gave you those numbers that were, you know, 10 days old. The last time. Right, right. What I was basically trying to... Where is it? Gosh dang it. I was just there. I just lost it. Uh, yeah. Just going the same route, different route. That uh, Looking for the same thing here. Just a minute. Just trying to get all theoretical. It's like, all right, so... You know right now I could start a C rank for approximately one cent in Glimmer, right? Yep. It would cost about 50% of that in Glimmer in the future. Uh, who knows what the dollar value would be by then. Yeah. But um, where are we at here? I think, well, I thousand addresses. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think I started a thousand thousand wallets. Uh and it cost me a total of around uh let's see here. Uh around twelve bucks I think. Twelve, fourteen bucks. Um that uh I'll then harvest on uh I gotta harvest on uh March second. Oh, okay. You're doing the sh shorties. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, so what I did those ones for um, is those ones are simply for uh, giving away Zen, Moonbeam Zen. Cool. Good. Um, what I, and what I what I plan to do, what I attempted to do, is reach out. To, uh, I talked to one of my contacts at uh, Coin Market Cap. And uh, trying to get uh, convinced to get a uh, be able to run an airdrop campaign on Coin Market Cap uh, to then be able to uh, get uh, to you know airdrop it away. Yeah, I'm digging it. 
You, 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 uh, every time I hop onto one of your chats here, you, you come out with more surprises. I'm, I'm liking that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, this is what I do, you know. Um, I literally, you know, open up conversations with random strangers. Have you heard the good word about crypto? <laughs> uh, sort of. Have you, you heard know? the you've been saved? <laughs> yeah, you know, or it's it's usually it's like, hey, do you know about Web three? What do you know about crypto? And uh, you know, I know you are a huge first principle person. I am too. I'm I'm a DeFi maxi, but I also believe that, uh, um, you know, centralized exchanges are an easy way to onboard people. Um. And so, like, what I do for, like, first-timers and stuff like that, um, I give them, you know, my, my Coinbase referral so that uh, they can, once they go through that process, they get crypto for free just by doing the learn and earns. And they can deep dive and learn more. And then they can do the learn and earns about, like, setting up a MetaMask, you know, or a DeFi wallet. And, uh, right, yeah. right, yeah. So, yeah, and the, uh, you know, the, s- the second time you run into them, then it goes to, a, all right, you did the central exchange thing. Now the next lesson is on its way. <clears throat> Get it oh, out yeah, of there. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I teach them the pullout method. <laughs> exactly. They say, well, what do, what do you mean? I thought we were done. Oh, no. No, we haven't even started yet. One yeah. step at a time. Yep. And that's and that's you know what I feel is like a really good way of, of onboarding people because um you know even Coinbase teaches people how to get off of Coinbase. You know? Yeah. Coinbase totally. even talks mm-hmm. it, you know, it, it it I don't know. Um I'm you know, Coinbase like Coinbase is changing some of their things around after the Kraken uh, smackdown. But if anyone has the chance to take on the SEC, uh, Coinbase is doing that. And Coinbase has the ability to do that. That's good. I, you know, I'm sure they didn't see it, but I called them out on Twitter a few months ago after that whole uh, FTX debacle. And they put out some sort of, you know, full page run down in the New York Times and it was it kind of contradicted itself at the end it was so I mean I don't think they really meant it that way but the way it read it was like I mean what what it boils down to is there and I remember having this conversation with other people it's like okay well just like you said it's like if anybody can do it it's the central exchanges to uh, you know push crypto forward in the right direction, you know, not just be puppets of the uh, the regular old financial nonsense. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, that's what the business that they're in. But if they have people in the background that actually fucking believe in crypto, then, you know, I get it. Like, you can't, like, you can't, like strong arm stuff all the time you know it, it needs to go in, in small increments and steps to get in the right direction otherwise it's going to be met with even more major resistance you know i mean that's that's the same that's the same game that the uh the regular uh, the regular system works you know they just do it in small increments so people just go ah it's no big deal i can live with that and then I mean, we've all seen it. If you haven't seen it in the past few years, uh, I don't know what to say, but um, yeah. But you know, there there is times when people just need to fucking say no. That that's enough. Uh, no, I don't care how menial and and dumb it sounds. I'm not doing it. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm starting to go in the weeds off in the weeds here, but. Uh, yeah, man, those big corporations, they, they can definitely help if they have the right people in the background. Uh, 
Yeah. You know, and it's just, uh, I got, um, oh my gosh, I, I was in a, uh, listened to a space recording today, um, that was told to me by Eskimo. Um, she found it and wanted to listen to it, but it was hosted by Ledger. Um, and I've done, I've done a video for, for Ledger showing how to use their, um, their pro Ledger. And I got to do another one too. Um, I'm waiting to see if I can get. Uh, they gave me two ledgers uh, to do uh, video for, so that was sort of cool. I'm waiting to, to see if I can get a stack, uh, two stacks out of them, to te- you know, to do a, how to use a st- uh, ledger. Hosted a space today with um, I want to say your Caitlin um, from uh, I forget the name of the bank's name. But they were trying to, um, I should know this by now. I, I wish I did. Um, I need to be on, s- yep, West, 70 West. Um, uh, you know, they were applying for an, uh, you know, Fed Bank license and membership to be, a, you know, a, an on-ramping solution. And um, what they were sort of being told, what they got, they got smacked around instead. Um for for doing that like so they sort of like shot the messenger like hey like they warned you about this and now everyone's slapping back because you know and almost like debanking um regulation and 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 it's sort of anyone that's you know involved in crypto is getting debanked in a way and it's forcing people to move projects overseas and not be part of the u.s Yeah, it's too bad. Um, I mean, we all we all know it's going to happen. You know, the, the the bigger, the more interested everyone gets in crypto, the more resistance there's going to be. So, you know, I've been expecting it, and what you know, we've all been watching it. it. Just gets more and more. You know, the more people who get interested, it's just, it's just the way it works. So. People don't. People will not give up power. Yeah. Period. Yeah, and uh, you know, um, it, you know, now it seems like the SEC and, and the Federal Reserve is even starting to fight state sovereignty of, of state bank charters that have that you know have uh, pieces in, in, in line with, with banks, uh, you know, where states have state charters with banks, um, that are FDIC insured, you know, but, uh, they have, um, I'm hearing about learning about, uh, you know, the, the fed and, and, uh, SEC, you know, sort of trying to fight that, you know, I'm like, that's, that's next level debauchery. Yeah, it's those banksters, man. They're they're running the show. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, and, and it's just I don't know. It, 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 as it attempts to take, you know, what I you know, it's crypto does the number one thing it does is you know everyone's using it you know to make money, but it, it make their money, you know, and and them have control over it. So I don't know. That's that's sort of like the biggest the biggest piece on it, you know. Yeah, we got to get away from it. Yeah, it's just like it's not helping anything. It's quite literally just a. It's just turned into a fucking derivative of, of fucking fiat. It, it's it's insane. Yeah. Uh, well, a derivative isn't the right word, but. Uh, you know, it's just yeah, it's totally lost its course, like completely lost course. Yeah, I mean, back in 2017, when uh, you know Wall Street got in, finally got the go ahead with uh, Bitcoin. I was like, "Fucking Bitcoin's done with. It's over. It's definitely over now for Bitcoin." Yeah, you know, it's like, "Fuck, what the fuck." <clears throat>
Do, 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 do. But anyway, on to happier things. Just keep moving forward, small steps at a time. Maybe that's a good idea. I was, uh, I minted some Polygon Zen in the early days. And my whole idea was to get people involved, you know, new people in crypto, just like, dude, just hand them a chunk of some Zen, uh, send them over a little bit of native. Yeah. You know, just set them, just set them up with a MetaMask, you know, just wherever on their phone or whatever, set them up a MetaMask, shoot them over some native, shoot them over some Zen, and then take them over to Zen.network and teach them to start minting their own, you know? Yeah. Just go straight, like straight to DeFi, forget the central exchanges, like that's easy enough. Like they can just go to a website, any website and figure that out, you know, you just click sign up and they go through the motions. <clears throat> but I mean, it's like, dude, like Moonbeam, you know, it's like one cent per tra per mint, you know, it's, that's great. <clears throat> And people get excited, you know, they hop on their MetaMask and they'll see the price has been changing and then then they might eventually want to go look at a chart or something, you know, it's, uh, I mean, we've all been there. It's it's exciting when you're new so to I it. So I just posted that um, in the Jumbotron. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, that's, that's basically what you, you know, you could see the post is a little longer in Telegram uh, than it, than it can be in, uh, uh, in Twitter, um, but that is that is what I, uh, you know, proposed and asked. You know, if you see that in the jumbotron, um, or you know, in the related tweets and stuff like that for the space, um, uh, yeah. So the Discord group, and uh, then yeah. My next step after that is um, uh, convincing um, the BD team over at MexC to add Moonbeam Zen. You know, because right now they have uh, Polygon Zen, ETH Zen, and uh, Phantom Zen. And B Zen as well. Or they might, I think they just have. I think they got rid of Phantom and Doge Zen, and they just have, I don't know. I'll have to check on that, but I know they have uh, M Zen, B Zen, and uh, regular Zen. Shout out to This Devin. is Mexi? Mexi, you said? Yeah, so Mexi. So that's my, uh, you know, one of the exchanges I work with um, in getting tokens listed. So, yeah. So I might, I might. Put, How does that work? They have like a, they have like a, is, isn't there like a Mexi global and then a different one or is it just. Yeah. Mexi and you, global anyone. So one, one of the cool things about. Share that as well. Is, let's see here. Where is it? Um, boom. You can just sign up with uh, um, uh, just an email address, um, and then yeah, you know. Yeah, for, that's what I heard the for, other day from someone else. I was like, "What? What are you talking about? What?" Yeah, so uh, I just posted that, and then uh, I don't, no, don't want to share it there. I want to share it in the space. Uh, so right now, so with with MexC, you can sign up with uh, just your email address. And what I recommend is, you know, putting your country as Canada. Um, that way, uh, there's no other KYC needed. Um, but, uh, 
You can you can do a deeper KYC if you want to, but you don't have to. Right now, you're limited. If you only do that layer one, uh, first layer KYC of like name and email, um, your uh, you can maximum you can trade is uh, eighty Bitcoin or twenty Bitcoin per day withdrawal. Um, with recent regulations and stuff like that, what uh, my my con- my my BD team there said told me is what they might have to be doing is changing dropping that down to uh, two Bitcoin a day. One of the things that they do a lot of is they work with a lot of third world countries where people might not have. Transactions. Yeah, I mean, I think it's cool either way. I'm sure. I'm sure they're KY seeing like through some sort of back door here. They have to be, <laughs> especially no. in the U.S. They've got to be. You, you, nope. My, my name, my official name on on MexC is Player One Taco, and my last name is Dot Eth. All right then. <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I recommend just, uh, uh, you know, you can sign up with with uh, email, put your country as Canada, and you're good. Um, blocking, anything like that. And then once you sign up um, online, you can then download the app. Uh, from the app store and use your same login and, and you're good to go within the app. Wow. Well, that's cool, man. You're, uh, you're the man with connections. It's, uh, good to know. This is like a walking encyclopedia. That's awesome. Just, just a degen that's been around for a minute. <laughs> so, well, shit, I'm gonna get. I'm, I'm on there right now. I'm gonna see if I, how much I can buy, how much Zen I can buy on here. <laughs> yeah. Um, Aren't these guys the first guys who who listed Zen actually? Like the first day, the first day. Uh. Like after 24 hours? Yeah, um, they were. I'm, All right. Now, was that you, Taco? Was that you talking to people? Uh, I might have sent a, hey, D-Gen Planet, pl- D-Gen Play of the Day to someone. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. I, you know. All right, dude. I'm sending everybody in the, well. Two months ago, I'm sending everybody in the price chat your way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Hey, man. no. Well, so it's all good. The, what what they had me, what uh, Gabe had me do was set up a new account, um, uh, as a as a Mexi uh, affiliate. And so, what I the reason I set up this account was strictly for Zen referrals. Um, because what I'm trying to show is, you know, the strength of the Zen community of using MEXC for spot trading or, you know, futures and stuff like that. Or if anyone wants to, like, learn futures and what that means and what that looks like. Um, but then uh, using that to uh, as leverage against with MEXC to have them, like, co-sponsor events. Um, so right now looking at, you know, and, and having them, you know throw some money down for, you know, um, you know, like, a, a dinner or something like that, or, you know, an open bar to invite more people in and learn more about, uh, Zen and Hey, you can buy Zen on Mex C by the way. Yeah. It sounds awesome. Yeah. You guys got, uh, that's cool. You got, uh, M Zen on here. You got, Whoops! I just missed, lost my page there. 
what was that? M Zen. I think there was five Zens on there for a minute. Phantom. I think I, I saw DC on there too. Yeah, Doge Chain. Yeah, we got DC, Phantom, M Zen, B Zen. Yep. Nice. <clears throat> yeah. My go-to. I wonder if I can buy with my card on here. Uh, I imagine I can. Use, yeah, use Banksa. Um, so Banksa uh, doesn't do KYC under $750. Um, but right now, I don't know uh, if depending on what your bank is, um, your bank might decline it for the simple fact that uh, a lot of banks have been now shook by the SEC to stop providing any crypto services. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mine hasn't yet, but generally if I'm going to be per making a purchase from like some new place like Banksa, I'll just call them in advance, like, hey, man, I'm going to be making a trance. Because they, they've free, they've frozen my assets several times. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I get it, but, uh, yeah, I usually just call them now. So this place is uh, in Australia, huh? Yep. Banks up? Yep. Uh, Never heard of it. Now I know that's cool. If uh, they don't KYC for what? What, what was it? Six fifty? Uh, Seven fifty. Um, so you know, but I, you know, I say you know, stay under that you know five hundred limit uh, for a few transactions, so you can sort of see what it's like, and um, and it doesn't shoot red red flag warnings depending on your bank. Um, but like six fifty, you're safe. Um, five hundred, you know, you're you know it will go through. Um, because what they say, what they're, that's their that's their risk level of what they're willing to risk, um, you know. Because they, you know, the idea is your bank's already KYC'd you. Your bank's are, your bank already knows who you are. You know. Uh, right, right. It's just that risk that the card was stolen, yeah. or something like that. Exactly. And they can cover their cover their losses. Yep. And so, um, yeah. Who we? I need to come in this chat more often. Yeah. It's a day. So where are you drive? You said you were driving from Illinois to Den. Oh, to the East Denver thing. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Well, is that why you're going? Yeah. There? Well, actually, driving from New York to uh, Denver. Damn, man, that's a good drive. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so far, actually, have driven one thousand one hundred and eleven miles. Uh, now one thousand one hundred and twelve miles. Still have nine hundred and twenty-five miles to go. Yeah, you got one more day. You driving into the night? God damn, it's it's late where you are. Uh, well, it's late your time anyway. It's uh, God, what is it? Four a.m. your time, New York time. Uh, yeah, it's, I just changed time zones, so it is 2.49 still, even though an hour ago it was 2.45. So. I can't do that night driving anymore. It just, it, I, I, it just bugs out my eyes and, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I just try to drive during the day now. I just got back from a 1500 mile road trip about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on putting together a Zen event at Denver. Um, and then, uh, in Denver and then another a Zen event in New York around the 15th of April. In New York or Denver? So I'm I'm trying to put together a Zen event in in Denver, 
uh, during Eat Denver, and then um, working to um, then I'm going to be doing one, uh, setting one up uh, at a um, at in New York as well in April. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Shit, maybe I'll be on another little road trip here in no time. Yeah. That is East Denver, February 24th to the March 5th. Starts tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's a bunch of different, a bunch of conference. Like, so the big thing that starts is the build a thon, uh, you know, the hackathon. Um, that starts. And then uh, the. Uh, the main conference for East Denver starts on the second. Um, judging for the build-a-thon starts on is on the fifth. Um, and I leave leave Denver on the sixth, then head down to Dallas, um, and then uh, yeah, uh, then uh, we'll head over to Austin for South by Southwest. So. If there's any projects that that need any marketing done at, at South by Southwest or East Denver, let me know. That's awesome, man. Traveling machine, getting the word out. Have you heard the good word? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think I'm just barely starting to hear it now. Actually, tell me more. <laughs> ah, so uh, there's this thing called blockchain. Ownership through encryption. You know? Do you know? And they're like, oh, I've heard about oh, this. Oh, is that it's like it's the, Bit, the Bitcoin? It's like the stock market, right? Well, you know, some people compare it like that. Um, and if that's sort of a concept that you, that, you know, you can grasp onto, um, think of like peer-to-peer -peer exchanges and, you know, everyone knows, you know, agrees upon that transaction so they know exactly where all the money is, you know, but no one can control it except for you. No one can, can touch your money. And so the way I like to tell, you know, talk about it is but that doesn't sound right. That, that, that sounds illegal. I, I'm no way. That can't be true. Well, so it, think of, remember the old days, you know, where Western Union used to like do carriages of money and pay of gold to banks directly and, and physically move your money around uh, for your paychecks and stuff like that and how you physically got your money for your jobs uh, you know think of it like that um, you were you were you know in control of your finances rather than you know these days uh, you know you get a, a, a paycheck you know direct deposited that money is just ones and zeros so you could think of it in that way. It's ones and zeros electronically, but it's secured and agreed upon, you know, by everyone that you have complete control of your money. How about this? What happened if I, I, I sent you a link for an app that you've heard of? I'm sure you've heard of it uh, called Coinbase. You don't have to put any money in it, but it will pay you free money to learn about it. And, and it takes, that's, and you know, maybe five minutes a week on that, if that. And you can earn about 30 to $40 over the next two months for free. And, you know, uh, what have you heard about crypto in the news recently? That it's illegal. Well, <laughs> Didn't it get outlawed a couple months ago? Well, not, not truly. I literally, I literally, I literally heard that one, uh, Less than two months ago from someone I was talking to. Uh, they were talking about the FTX thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so, well, what that did actually was was cause a, a lot of the market to drop. And since you compared it to, to stocks, you know, you've, you've heard of Warren Buffett, right? Question mark? Oh, well, that rich guy that runs the world? Yeah. Um, you've heard what he says says about stocks right and when to buy he says when there's blood on the streets you buy 
And so you can sort of look at, you know, yeah, crypto is in a down market. So, you know, if you're spent buying something that's worth, you know, you know, you buy some a dollar's worth of something when it's down 90 percent right now or 75 percent. Um, rather than buying, you know, a dollar's worth when it's at the top of the market. You know, it, it's something that, that could go a long way for you. And you have control over it. And you're allowed to do what you want. That's sort of usually how the conversation goes. Yeah, good job, man. It's like you've done this before. <laughs> a few times. Yeah, you know, the, the uh, sending them straight to Coinbase, it's actually not a bad idea when you think of the... Uh, the learn and earn deal. Yeah. And, uh, but I usually send them, you know, two links. I, I send them Coinbase and I send them, uh, crypto.com. And that's so that they can have two different accounts and they can see which you, sometimes it comes down to the UI as well. Like what's easiest for someone. Cause everyone, you know, learns differently. Coinbase has their, uh, you know, crypto.com has their, a little bit more of an incentive, a different incentive model. Um, you know, with their missions um, and education piece, uh, their their crypto.com university. But what I do talk to them about is like, you know, it's sort of think of it like your left pocket and your right pocket. And you can learn how to do transactions, you know, and send money from your left pocket, your Coinbase wallet, you know, pocket to your crypto.com pocket. Um, and the only thing that you, and that's how you can sort of learn wallet transactions and such, um, trading between the two. Yeah, there you go. I, uh, you mentioning that I actually remembered, uh, there's somebody in the daps chat on telegram. Yeah. His name is digi mentor, digi mentor. He hasn't really made a, a big presence in there, but he's posted a couple times. And he wants to create like an online academy, right? With like short videos and stuff like that, teaching people about about crypto. And he wants to utilize Zen as the uh, the official rewards token for it all. Yeah, but- I keep showing interest, and like I hit him up again today. We'll see. But uh, I've been really excited since I uh, came across that guy. Because that's like what Zen's all about, man. It's kind of like the whole idea behind it is get people learning about crypto, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and and I, you know, I, I've, I've done some, I've, you know, learned to earn, basically. Um, uh, you know, a good one that, that um, you know, Zen, I don't know if you know Zeneca in Zen Academy. No, never heard of it. Uh, Zeneca, let me uh, let me find my thing for that. Uh, boop, boop. Uh, uh do, do, do. Boom. So that's Zeneca. I actually got to meet him in person. Um, really, really calm and, and collected. Um, and, uh, but uh, talks about Zen Academy and stuff like that. And it's a, you know, a journey process of um, going through, um, you know, learning Web3 um, and some rewards for it too. Um Oh my gosh, there's another one that I really like. Uh, it's uh, something 101. Uh, I'll have to look at it. I have a couple of the NFTs, but they basically teach you everything from like scratch to zero. Um, and you can get you get free NFTs for you know different uh, learning different thing learning different things. Um, Galaxy does the same thing with oats. 
um, OAT, uh, that on-chain award tokens. They're like little NFTs that, that mint out that you can get on Galaxy as well. Good stuff. <clears throat> As as for, well, I don't know about you, Taco, but uh, for me anyway, and other people I've spoken with, it sometimes feels freaking impossible for anybody to even get a glimmer in their eye when you start talking about crypto. You literally, it's almost like you need to wait for them to bring it up, and it might never happen, you know? Yeah. Well, and a lot of times, a lot of people know about it because they've heard about it or their friends talk about it, but their friends haven't taken the time to, to, to tell them about it. Um, and so sometimes what I talk about is like the import, like, you know, I talk about like self-sovereign, you know, SSI, so self-sovereign identities or DIDs, digital identities. Um, and the, the piece that I, I run on that a little bit is about um you know i i talk about it like and i i use the same story with with both guys and women it touches a little bit more home to to women than it does does the guys but guys understand it um so for a few years a long long time long in a galaxy far far away at a long time time ago um i was a uh, head of security for a nightclub um, for the front door, um, and making, you know, cause for me, a, a club, you know, I grew up in the clubs, um, but a club experience starts outside, you know, and that sets the tone for, you know, what kind of fun you're going to have inside as well. Um, but one of the things with personal ownership of data is that, uh, you know, you own your data so you can choose who to give access to it. But you can also then revoke that access. Um, and so, like, when you go to a club, they really only need to know two things. Technically, one, uh, that you're over age, you know. And so through, like, a digital, you know, owning your personal data, um, you know, it, it all it does is, you know, zero knowledge, ZK um, work what it does is it proves that you're over the, you know, it doesn't need to prove anything other than yes, you meet the, meet the require, if then requirements, um, uh, of being a certain age. And so, um, it then, you know, sets the tone of, you know, I've worked the door and, and, you know, you get, sometimes you get the hot shots from like higher, you know, outside security, uh, contract security working with you um, if you're you know understaffed or you know a big event so like not your normal not the normal club staff that everyone knows but you get these you know guys that you know couldn't cut it as cops or you know never could make it to the military but they they see themselves as these alpha dudes that you know they're king shit and you know you get you get some woman that comes to the door and she shows her ID you know, really the purpose of the ID is handing two things, that it's that person's ID and that they're overage. No other information on that ID matters. Um, but, you know, I've been there when I've seen, like, guys say to, like, the woman, like, oh, you live on this street? Well, I live, like, two blocks away from you. Oh, I should, I'm going to start keeping an eye out. Like, hopefully, you know, maybe we'll run into you. Like, you know... From a woman's perspective, this is like a total violation of her privacy. <laughs> exactly. From a from a from a woman's perspective, it's like, oh my fucking god, what the fuck do I, what did I get myself into? You know, um, this fucking douchebag. <laughs> yeah, and and that happens a lot, you know. But really, the only two things that are needed to know is that it's your ID, and you're over the age. It doesn't even matter, you know. You. Sh doesn't really even need to know what what age you know and that's zero knowledge proof stuff um and so um it uh you know it, it becomes an if then 
statement, you know, almost of, of proof. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, um, yeah. So like being able to, you know, once you get past that door, all they needed to know was your, 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 it's your identity and it's your age. And so that's one of the ownerships of, of, um, you know, DIDs can have, you know, proving that it's yours and proving that you're over age. So that's sort of, you know, if I'm talking about like the infrastructure piece, because, you know, the encryption side of it is, is, you know, do we want, you know, do you want to bog people down with, with the weeds um, or not? Um, one of the really cool things are like automated, automated generated wallets and distributed keys. Um, I was talking with an Arbitrum researcher and he said it best. Um, you know, he's like, you know, everyone says, you know, not my, not my keys, not my crypto. He's like, I want to, I want us to get to a point to where exchanges, you know, have insurance in place. And so not my keys, not my problem, you know? And so where there's yeah. that trust, trust is in place that their money is safe. You know, and if exchanges can get to that level, then they're just as good as a Wells Fargo or, you know, a Chase Bank or a credit union. I mean, how, how, how would that not render the, the, the central exchanges obsolete? Well, it's, I mean, how, 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 how would that work? You know, well, so if centralized exchanges, you know can get their act together and, and, you know, some of them are starting to do that. Then like, you know, like through proof of reserves and not paper trading. Um, it's one of those things to where they're, tr they're trying to, some of them are actually trying to be legitimate. You know, they're trying to be, um, but they're not, what's the, the hardest thing is that the U S isn't making regulations and, to quote someone else, by them not making regulations, they're sort of actually regulating. That's that's a sort of regulations in and of itself, but it's also you know like regulation through punishment. You know, um, like you know the big Kraken uh, fine of thirty million dollars the SEC put on on Kraken is that they said that their staking as a service was a security. The interest that they were paying to their to their users made it a security and i'm like well banks earning interest on a bank isn't a security why should interest you know earned elsewhere be one so it it really sort of hurts the cause because um instead of saying hey your I's just need to be dotted this way and your T's need to be dotted that or crossed this way. Instead, it's just like what, you know, the, the legal document, the, 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 the paperwork filed by the SEC said was that the reason why the SEC had jurisdiction is that the, that Kraken had roughly $145 million or $150 million in, in staking um, being used on their platform and they could see that from on-chain data and, and clear data re account results, um, audits. Uh, so very clean and clear data, but then that roughly 45 million of that, uh, stake was from us residents based residents. So that because there was a majority were, you know, us, uh, of us rather than, you know, versus a hot, you know, the, the mishmash of other countries involved. The SEC said that it had jurisdiction. And then what it said was because there was roughly $45 million of U.S. dollars staked and that of that $45 million, um, $14 million roughly or $14.7 was paid out to that money 
as interest. So those people who earned 31% interest, um, roughly on their stakes, that that constituted it being a security. So basically, people got, you know, Kraken got fined um, and told to stop because they were giving too good of a return to U.S. residents, to, to us, U.S. residents. And the way they were getting that 31, you know, the incentivization was, and I'm not saying that it was a, a full uh, 31%. I'm just saying that the dollar value in relation it equaled 31% because originally whatever crypto they were given could have been at a lesser value. But just, you know, with crypto market moving, it turned into, you know, $45 million worth of tokens. Um, that they're, they're sort of blocking that out and by offering too good of a service. And what where Kraken was getting their incentivization was profits from profits that they were making elsewhere, like on trading fees, the, you know, people for off-ramping or on-ramping or trading, they were taking those, those profits from there, so their money, from their left pocket to pay people in their right pocket. So it wasn't, they weren't taking any user funds. They weren't doing any paper trading. They were just providing too good of a service. And that then, you know, disgusting. became grounds for them providing too good of a service. Um, and so, you know, Coinbase is ready to fight that. They say that they're staking as a certain, you know, Kraken ended up being the martyr, but by them cracking, by the SEC cracking down so much too fast, so fast, it's going to provide kickback and people are going to prepare for it and, and fight. Um, in the Dude. past, what the, the, what the SEC has done is freezed funds. But if, you know, um, Coinbase has already put together a, a legal defense fund. Um, so it can't be touched, you know? And, and so if you, you're putting major money behind a project that, you know, a project is putting major behind money behind their legal defense fund, they'll actually be able to fight the SEC. Well, Godspeed, those guys. Because yeah. <laughs> if what we look, are really looking at, we're looking at, um, you know, basically the SEC is basically saying that um, only they can control what is good or bad for for people. And the SEC does do good work, but on this there's there too much there's too much money from people that don't have control of this or can't control it and so they don't want it to happen the way it is yeah, happening yeah that's what it boils down to yeah yeah and um you know so it won't be um you know financial crisis could be coming and and what they'll do is, you know, with CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, is then say like, "Hey, uh, you're a U.S. resident. Um, go down, download this app, KYC, and prove who you are, and you have X amount of dollar, uh, you know, dollars waiting for you." They don't even have to say that it's crypto, but it's, you know, it's, you know, secured encryption network type of thing or whatever. And what that will then do is give them control to be able to say someone's value is not, you know, what they can do with their dollars. And instead of blacklisting people, you know, what they'll do is they'll just start, start with a short list and say, this is, this is who's whitelisted for you to do business with. Uh, yikes. <laughs> Jeez. 
So how about how about getting into some D Gen shit? Let's uh All right. Know, Hold on one second. Save everybody everybody heard around the block lately. You, oh, you wanna you wanna know some D Gen shit? Let's see here. I'll I'll give you some D Gen D Gen Alpha. Give me just one second to reach behind me and find some midnight snacks. You know? That's what I am trying to do right now. <laughs> you're an animal. It's like 4 a.m. and you're just wide awake, driving away. <clears throat> it's yep. awesome. Yeah, I cannot find it while driving. Uh, all right. Um, DJ Alpha. Um, uh, so, uh, a new, another layer one that, uh, is just starting out, um, that I'm, I'm doing some research on, um, and going to get involved with is, uh, I want to say it's called uh, Qua, Quai Chain. Let me uh, find it, throw it up on the Jumbotron real quick. Um, uh, do 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 do. Q U A. Hi. Or is it I A? Nope, that's not it. look for it in a minute um but yeah um where is that i just i saved some stuff for it so i could find it later um and that's my that's gonna be my degen play for a little bit But the big question is, uh, are you get you're you're getting ready for Phantom, uh, and uh, I'm wanting uh, to see uh, I'm wanting to see some uh, stuff from uh, uh, Moonbeam next, um, you know Moonbeam with Avalanche, you know. Do, 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 do. Dex Labs. Man. Where is that? I saved that somewhere.
do 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 do. Are you doing any uh, blank to earn projects? Looking for uh, you, you said Quai is it Q U dot A I network? I gotta I gotta double check. I'm, I'm I uh, I'm looking for it right now. Um, from what I uh, saved from them, um, I thought might have sent it to someone else real quick. Um, here it says Quai Network is a set of EVM compatible blockchains that achieves uh, whatever that number is five zero oh fifty k transaction per second without compromising decentralization. Yep. Kind of a crazy like orange uh, homepage with some sort of. Uh, like some orange thing and some people standing around. Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, the website is pretty cool. Um, scroll through and stuff like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That I'm all in. Right. I'm all in. Their website is cool. I'm buying all of it. Yep. I'm getting serious DGen stuff going on here. Yeah, Quiet Network. Um, so many chains, one network. So we're talking, uh, is this like polka dot on steroids or just a uh, different way of approaching it or what? Do you know much that, about it? Nope. I don't know much about it yet. Um, uh, building to, uh, uh, got some stuff to do on it on like, I'm going to, I'm planning on like deep diving it on it on Saturday and then. Um, during ETH Denver, going to be meeting with uh, the team from it uh, and do some interviews and breakdowns. Oh, right on, man. Yeah. But I did get that uh, um, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, Um, uh, yeah, uh, basically, uh, um, uh, you know, that I got that cosmos feeling slash, uh, uh, polka dot feeling from him. Huh. All right. Are are these guys uh have they launched yet or is this still are they still working on stuff or what? Um I think Testnet is live.
So, yeah. They have NFTs and, and all of those pieces, and yeah. You know, they got some... My God, I, I, I can never just keep up with so much of this stuff, man. I'm going to yep. look into it, though, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's literally, like, it's literally more than a double-time job. Oh, yeah. You know, I haven't even, haven't even skimmed the surface with all this stuff. That is, uh, that is mine, dude. Go ahead. Oh, that was, that is my, uh, big, uh, that is my, uh, D-Gen play that I got going on right now. Um, and then, um, uh, the other one that I'm working with is Clopper, uh, N F Clopper NFT, so C-L-O-P-R NFT. Um, and basically NFTs that own other NFTs. So bringing more value to the original. <laughs> How does that work? So NFTs uh, that own F NFTs. Yeah. So the new like owning like, like partial ownership or something like that or no. So, um, uh, Basically, like a new NFT that gets minted from uh, um, uh, you know, so you go go to Clopper, you mint a potion, and then you know through their DApp, you uh, you have you pick the N your NFT that you want to drink the potion, and a new NFT is, is minted. Um, that puts the, the NFT that you wanted it tied to as the owner. So it's not, it's not the wallet holder that owns the NFT, but the NFT itself. So, um, let's say you have, uh, a, uh, okay. yeah. so then it makes it more value. You know, the idea behind it is that it then, you know, provides more incentivization and more, more value to that NFT. Yeah, it's like like NFT babies. Like it, it comes as a full set, right? Yeah. Um, and so they're they're based out of France. Um, and this is this is one of those meetings that I met, you know, from uh, uh, I met Anton, the founder, uh, a year ago, and met him randomly uh, in Paris. Um, and he, I don't remember what the word, first words I said to him were, but I remember us talking and, and you know, sharing a uh, plate of cheese and getting to meet his, uh, I don't remember if it was girlfriend or wife or fiance, um, and talked about his restaurant that he owns and like me next time I visit to come visit his restaurant. And we were talking a lot with Web3. He's like, yeah, I'm working on an NFT project and everything. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, let me know. Um. And then literally a year later, you know, he starts buzzing me like, Hey, you've been on my mind. I wanted you to know we're live or, you know, it's real. Like we made it. And so one of the things that they did is they did all of the smart contracts and all of the D apps and everything first. Um, and then, you know, then they'll get ready to mint in like, uh, April, April or May, um, to go live. And so it, it's sort of cool on that aspect of being able to have an NFT that then owns other NFTs 
You know, the idea, the first line of, there can be all sorts of different types of potions. Um, but the first ones are their uh, story potions. So basically, um, owns a, a, you know, a six page, they're working with a Hollywood script writer so that every NFT has its own unique uh, story, uh, basically. So even more IP rights, you know, like that. And, and you don't, if you don't own that NFT, you don't have the rights to the other NFTs, basically. I don't know. That's the other DGen shit I'm in. And then Savvy DeFi. Uh, that's a big one. What up, Jetman? How are you doing, sir? Doing great. Good morning. Good morning. GM, GM. Yeah, what's up, uh, Alicia? What's up, Danny? What's going on, ma'am? Um, it's 10 32 a.m. from where I'm from. I just woke up, came on Twitter, came on Twitter to be on this space, and I'm taking a look at my trades I took last night. They have been profitable. All right. What do you got? Uh, are you, you have any uh, tr- major trades planned for today? Um, okay, so last night I tweeted about Aptos and uh, OP and um, um, high USDT. So these are the stocks I'm looking at. I'm expecting them to make some decent run. And I'm pretty bullish on SOS. Yeah. That's what I'm taking a look. Yeah. Um, check out GMX as well. Uh, I, I also have some longs, uh, 2x longs put in on uh, ApeCoin, doing some movements, hit, it hit target one, um, about to hit target two, um, GMX, I wish I had wrote it out, um, I ended up closing position way too early, um, and then did another short run, I thought it was only going to pick seam up to 75, but last I checked it was like at 82, it might be above that now, but that's a uh, GMX is is a good good piece too to 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 see some run up on longs. All right, thanks for sharing that info, bro. I yeah. will check it out right now in Trading View. Yeah. Are you uh, are you doing uh, shorts on OP? Or are you doing longs? I'm doing longs, longs and OP. Longs and everything I actually talked about. Longs and high, longs and OP, longs and aptos. Okay, nice. I'm just, I'm just sports on SOS. Yeah. Like seeing stuff like that. I, I'm usually, I'm a longs man. I don't like playing the shorts game. Um, just because then I, that means I'm, I'm being pessimistic. Um, and I say that in a funny way, just for the simple fact that I like to, you know, think of it just being a pest on something and not actually, you know, it's, uh, I don't like having the only time I look at taking shorts are around, um, investor unlocks because, you know, a whole bunch of tokens will hit, hit the market. Um, and so I'll, I'll take a short write it down and then you know once it you know st- starts picking up steam it will trade positions and, and I'll get back into that on, on a long once it stabilizes
Oh man. So Denny, what is what is your DJ pl- play of the day? <laughs> it's just all Zen, man. <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah. No, I would. Uh. Well. Obviously, uh, what a you know, we were so we were we had a we had a two hour space in the uh, uh, Zen YC chat today to sort of talk about you know different uh, um, different plays and stuff like that, looking at the short and middle and long term term plays. Um, you know, uh, you're are you you're getting uh, one of the things that I'm getting ready to do is get into uh, some of the LP pools on Phantom. Um, oh, nice. Uh, you know, because, it'll you know, price will move um, with people, you know, wanting to buy buy into it once they see, you know, some FOMO pieces into it. So um, that's yeah, where I think. Yeah. Um, were, you, uh, were, you, were, were you minting or are you just going to buy off the market? and? Oh, minting. There? I'm minting. Okay, cool. No, yeah. no, for the LP positions. Oh, uh, yeah, no, just minting, uh, using what I've minted, um, as well, um, and then, uh, yeah, um, piece from that. Yeah, I've been thinking the same. I've been thinking the same. I've I've been providing LP for just regular old Zen, but. Uh, no other networks and unfortunately i didn't uh i didn't really even think about it a couple months ago doing some shorter term shit just just for that you know yeah um um, i guess you you know obviously you buy it off the open market but man that's a rough one with the i guess i'll have to go to mexi and go from there because there's no fucking liquidity on dexes um yeah, you can find some of them, uh, you know, under trading pairs and stuff like that on like Coin Market Cap. They can tell you liquidity depth. Um, yeah, yeah. I know everyone likes Dex tools. Um, I do too, but uh, Coin Market Cap gives a good uh, UI uh, piece of that. I I feel. Yeah, I usually um on uh, deck screener. Yeah. So it covers quite a quite a few networks on here, so uh, pretty pretty good tool. Yeah. But you know, obviously, I, I have no idea. They, I'm sure they don't cover all swaps. Like with like Moonbeam, for example, I would be amazed if Stella Swap was on there. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Um, I think it is. I think it is under uh, Deck Screener. Yeah, no, that was. Oh uh, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely Stella Swap is definitely on here. It's uh, I just never clicked on it a long time ago because it has even less liquidity than uh, uh, what is it? Beam Swap. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's good to, I mean, I knew, I knew today was coming several months ago and then I happened to find Zen and became like a fucking fanatic, you know, and I'm just like, 
nose deep in all of it, but there is a lot of cool stuff coming coming down the bend here. So, yep. Um, yeah. Um, sort of, you know, looking at the different spots of, uh, you know, with TB and uh, Phoenix. Um, looking more into uh, Xmon and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll keep. Yeah, for sure. I'm. I'm. I'm pretty stoked about next myself. Um, don't know a whole lot about it. Just that little flow chart that they released. You know, a couple weeks or a couple months ago or something now. But uh, that looks pretty cool. Uh, I really like that they're doing a, li a liquidity thing. We we're. I know I was kind of talking about it a lot in some private chats and other people were and maybe they already had it planned, but um, it's kind of cool, you know, because it'll, it'll kind of, if people want to get involved, they're going to need to learn how to provide liquidity. Yeah. You know, they're going to need to learn, they're going to need to learn to, to select their, their, their range and how long they want to be in and all of that. So that's, uh, that's cool. It's it's going to be a big learning curve for new people and people teaching them, <laughs> but uh, you know I, I think it's I think it's a, a really good. You know I'm excited to see how they what the final product will be, but you know it's just based it's just a NFT you know Uniswap V3 so should uh be incentivizing for x1 and all that so it's uh yeah it could be pretty cool well and people are just fucking hyped about this whole x1 thing you know and i i don't know if the majority of them really understand that it's mortal it's likely that the majority of all X1 will be distributed with through the auctions, not not the airdrop. Yeah. You know, they're just like, oh, well, does it get X1? Does it get X1? It's like, well, yeah, but it's it's you know, it's don't expect it to be like crazy. You know, it's it's going to be auctions going on for a couple of years. So this is a this is a uh, a question. Um, Maybe you might have an answer to this. So right now, you know, with uh, the Apex, you know, the Limited and the Collector uh, NFTs getting a specific amount of X1 for each one, I think it's, uh, you know, Apex, you get a 100, um, you know, and I know all the levels of Apex are broken down. And then Collector is... is just set at, at 10 x1 so if someone is like looking to get a lot of x1 rather than minting one apex you know that pays a hundred um or getting 10 of those um you know getting you know a hundred uh collectors would get you a thousand x1 as well for you know that let much less of a of a of a cost right right that, that's just uh that's just devnet yeah. the the testnet mainnet will be totally different they just haven't figured out how they want to distribute it yet so yeah and i know it will change we talked about we talked about batch day I just didn't know if, uh, you know, I'm, I'm collecting information for others as well, you know? Um, right, right. Um, as, as far, they could be launching Testnet, like, within, if I recall right, they, uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, they, they mentioned they'd be launching a Testnet within a few months. Yeah. And that te there, that test net, you're going to be able to trade on on uh, Ethereum, like on Uniswap and shit. So, 
uh, yeah, people are going to start going crazy with the burns and all that shit. Once they realize that that test net is going to be main net eventually. Well, and, and it's one of those things to where like, what is the, what is the, you know, what is the right play? Is it, is it short, short mints to get, uh, you know, uh, to get liquid, um, is it a cross between like staking ladders and then staking, um, or minting ladders and then staking ladders? I mean, I don't tell me about it. It's uh, it's mind bending, isn't it? Um, I mean, they're still even debating like how the distribution model. It's not necessarily just going to be based on. Uh, you know how much economic value has been pumped in. They they might be they they might throw in a twist with like, you know, per percentages like how many holders on each network and shit like that too. So I, I just have no idea. Yeah. And these NFTs though are going to be very important for. Uh, they're they're gonna they're gonna play a part in all of the core teams stuff i think like with the next and x1 so you know these nfts are valuable now but they're going to be valuable for a lot longer than people might realize you know yeah i uh did you uh did you get any uh i forget i forgot if you said it or not did you get any of the um, OG Polygon, the Freaka Corns? No, no, I, I wasn't, uh, I, no, no, I didn't participate in that one. Um, yeah, no, I was able to admit to a couple through the, con through the contract. I, uh, I, quite honestly, I'm a little weary of Polygon. It's, uh, Zen is pretty good at breaking shit, you know? Yeah. But that's good. Like, hopefully it's sending a message to, to other teams. Like, man, if you guys want to be successful, you gotta, you gotta be able to take the heat, you know? Yeah. Like how? Like how do you plan on scaling? You know, Polygon has been around for a while. You know, a couple of years now, right? Like, uh, coming up on a possible bull run here, where transactions are going to start getting insane again, and you know, gas fees going wild, and but it is what it is. Yeah. Oh. The one thing that, that the one thing that um, I guess sort of screwed up Polygon, well, not screwed up Polygon, but um, was bad for both sides was there was, an, there was another NFT project that a lot of hype, uh, a play to earn game that uh, also launched that day. So there was a ton, like that was a there was a lot of work on that side too. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, uh, that's a boomer. I bet if they had known that, they might have postponed. Because I, I like before launch, even we kind of yep. talked them into like postponing another week because the week that they were planning on launching just so happened to be on the same weekend as uh, the HSI auctions over at uh, Hedron. Yeah. And there's, you know, all the stink with the Hex community and the Zen key, you know, all that. And it, that just would have been kind of rude. So he, he, he pushed it back another week. Yeah. And, and that, you know, what, you know, my question is, where's the freaking beef? What, what's the reason, you know? And it's just, you know, we were, we were talking about this earlier tonight, you know, and, and, and TV was around for that talk and, uh, 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 JD was here, uh, you know, we were sort of just sort of talking on, you know, there's enough room for everyone, but it's the people that are so tied that it's only one thing. Cause what's, 
what's what I was I was told about like the early days of Vicosa and Hedron, um, and how like the like a, like a lot of the hex community was like, oh my god, this is awesome, this is amazing, but then there was like a candleful that was like, this is evil, this will ruin your your hex, you know, this will uh, make you lose it and everything like that, and it was you know rather than building and letting people decide what to do with their own money, the first principle, you know, piece of, of blockchain, um, it was, you can only do with, you know, you're only a good person if you do with your money as we tell you to do. Mob mentality almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I, I don't want to beat this dead horse more, but, you know, it's like, I just want to reiterate, and I know I'm not the only one that said it, but it's like this, that mentality is not going to be helpful with pulse chain. Yeah. Period. It will, it will make pulse chain fail if other projects are not welcome to come over there. Yeah. I mean, that's just what it boils down to, you know? I mean, fuck with that that man t- mentality. Like for all we know, Pulse Chain has already failed. You know, if, if that's gonna, if like, if you know, a big capital I F, if that's like the underlying theme of all of it. And I don't know, I'm just one guy, but you know, if that's the vibe, the ultimate vibe, you know, like fifty one percent or something, it's just, uh, it's not gonna do well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I want to see it succeed. Um, I might not agree with everything, but I, I want to see it succeed. Yeah. I mean, like you said, there's, there's enough room for everyone. You know, there's definitely some stuff about that whole, uh, well, for lack of, for lack of a better term, that ecosystem, you know, the hex, hex scene. Um, I see the goods and, and the bads about it. You know, I'm, I'm involved in it, but, um, you know, I I try to be somewhat subjective about it. You know, I try not to get all fucking emotional. (laughs) It's just, uh, you know, it just is what it is, but you know, the, the optics, optics mean a lot. Yeah, you know, and then you get to token like that's kind of what gets people involved in the first place is those those first impressions, right? So, um, I ultimately was one of those guys that looked past it and looked through. I I might not have put enough weight on it, you know. I, I tried to look past it and to like listen to the ultimate message. You know, I've researched text for at least a month before I even came close to getting involved. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I can see I can see being protective of of a chain as well, though. Like being like, no, we don't want fucking shitty projects going, right? Yeah. But then that then that just boils down to well, what's each and in everybody's individual opinion on what a shitty project is, right? Well, if it's if it's adhering to first principles the best you can, well, pulse chain and hex ain't it for you, you know? Yeah. But I mean, I, I see he he runs it like a business, and that's cool. That's that's fine. You know, at least it's out there. There's hopefully nothing is being hidden or anything. So, you know, transparency is really important. So it just allows people to come and go as they please and, uh, you know, make 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 the right decisions for themselves. Yep. Welcome to the room, Jonathan. Um, Happy to have you up. Um, the late night DJ part three, having to deal with two other Twitter rug pulls. Uh, 
just degening out for the road trip uh, from driving from New York to East Denver. But um, no, uh, Denny, um, it, it's one of those things where, um, like, I've met some of the teams that, you know, that are building, you know, for Pulse Chain, but have built, um, you know, um, on ETH and stuff like that. And they're, they're building good stuff. It's getting people to, you know, uh, wait for Pulse Chain to, you know, come out that, that it's almost created a mob mentality of people getting um, restless and, and sort of tearing apart themselves in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think we've all seen it. Um, and yeah. I, for one, I mean, I, I got involved, but, uh, you know, I also read the, the disclosure. I, it was obviously quite ironic that uh, Rach would uh, do, so, you know, do that sacrifice stuff, like not your, well, it's his now, you know, but I said, yeah, what the hell, let's do it. You know, I read the fucking disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I sent and I sent away my money, you know, and my 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 crypto. So <laughs> it's like, all right, well, that's done. You know, uh, if and when it happens, it'll happen. But otherwise, I'm just gonna continue with my life and you know, kind of keep my ear to the ground every once in a while and see what's going on. And that's about it. I'm not gonna get all fucking emotional about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's one of those things where you have to like you have to have trust in it from you know that it's going to work, you know, and and it's an underlying piece on that. Um I you know one of the a comparison so I I didn't participate in the sacrifice or anything. I, I didn't even own any hex until I knew about Hex, but I didn't buy any Hex until uh, during PulseCon. Um, that was the first time I got, I got to meet some of the teams from Pulse, uh, you know, um, from Hex and stuff like that. Um, oh, th- this year? Yeah. So. Oh, nice. Well, you got in at a good time, man. I sold it once it 2 x for me. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking traitor. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, pull profits. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and pulled profit on my hedron that you know, uh, you know, forex for me. Um. So yeah. Uh, then I got like an icosa thing going on. Uh, I was immersed into the icosa the hedron talking. ecosystem. Um. So, yeah, but, um, uh, so no, there was this project on Solana that like, it was called TGen town and I missed the mint for it. Um, and, but, and that was because I was, I don't remember if I was sleeping or flying or degening into a different project or something like that. And I got distracted and I missed the mint. Um, but it jumped up into price, like, uh, into like 10 soul, uh, floor. And, uh, really the only AM, there'd only been Twitter spaces and stuff like that. And like half of them were just like Morris code messages, literally Morris code messages, like, you know, saying all will be more revealed fire will burn away the souls, you know, or, you know, fire will cleanse and, then all of a sudden, you know, the, you know, it start, turned into like a sat, a ritual started happening. Um, and, uh, you know, they ran, were running like an, an open Twitter space of like, you know, counting souls that have been put into the fire and they provided a burn address. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, well, shit, I just bought this, te- this, this thing for 10 soul. And I'm going to just go like 
burn it? Okay. I literally did that. You know, and, uh, you know, it only took like three days to see a return on it. You know, but like, it was like, what the, like, what did I do? Oh my God. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, it, what, it, what's really hilarious is the project ended up getting rubbed by one of their advisors and one of the team members. Um, but then the community was able to take it over and take legal, uh, not necessarily legal action, but take legal control over the project as well. And then they worked with Magic Eden to investigate everything and, and deep dive on it. And then Magic Eden, you know, because Magic Eden did some fuck, not fucked up shit, but like they like they helped promote it because you know it was it was supposed to be a game changer. Magic Eden like set aside money uh, from the fund to help, uh, you know, help the project start to get the community, you know, the, the new leaders, you know, build the project out. And instead what the, what the project did is they didn't, they didn't, they weren't able to make everyone whole, you know, but they, they tried to, you know, and like did like one seventh of what you lost or something like that, basically. And, uh, Oh my gosh, what exit am I missing? Um, and so, uh, instead of using the funds to like pay for the project and like build it out more, they gave it back to the community that, that had it stolen from them. And I don't know, that was sort of cool, but, uh, yeah. Um, so you can sort of look at it like, sort of like in the same way as like the OA for that in a weird way. But, um, Yeah. And that project's doing really good now, too. Yeah, right on. Yeah. I, I got love for my Solana family. I am a little sad that my Solana stores are closing. <laughs> that makes me sad. Why are the, is, uh, they just didn't make it through the, bull, the bear market, huh? What's well, going on they were, the, Well, no, they're just not generating enough revenue you know because originally they thought that you know they they got funded from solana foundation and then a lot of projects i think it was like maybe about like 50 projects subsidized and like yeah. like swag to sell and like it would and one of the things that solana did was um they basically like anyone that walked by or walked in, they would onboard, you know, they had a whole little POAP journey and education piece. Like they had this like private little booth to where you could go download a phantom wallet. You had, they had like a little card you could put your, your seed phrase on. Um, and then you'd go scan uh, QR codes, like receivers, uh, receiving wallet uh, and take like a little, watch a video, take a little test. Um, and then you'd get like a little POAP. Uh, and then at the end, if you did like, so my, the Miami store, you had to do like six of them because they had like, um, they had like 10 different ones you could do. And then the New York one had like maybe like seven journeys that you could do. And if you did four of them, uh, you then go scan and you'd get a, you, they'd pay you 10 bucks, um, USDC to, to do that. And, uh, then if you bought anything in the store with your Solana wallet, it was 50% off. Nice. So you literally, you go buy a ledger for 50 bucks. So they may be over-incentivized? Um, no, because the, 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 that, that money was like allocated for it, you know? But, like, the turnaround of, like, stuff being bought, I think, um, and, you know, foot traffic and sales and stuff, I think that might be contributing. Like, it couldn't be self-sustaining, and that was what they were wanting, you know? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Not, not having to rely on subsidies. So... That sort of sucks. 
Um, cause I threw the, the first, uh, DJ takeover event I threw was at, uh, um, uh, was at Sol- the Solana labs in New York or Solana. Yeah. What up, Mark? You, I uh, hope you are having a great day. Come join us. Um, Hope you're having a good day. Just DJing on the road, driving from New York to uh, East Denver. Uh, have uh, 1,204 miles driven so far and 835 miles left to go. Um, come join the DJ after dark. Been talking uh, Zen, Zen token, and then, uh, you know, Zen on Moonbeam and what I've been doing there uh, as a, you know, because I work for Stella Swap, uh, Mindless Shill, uh, the largest DEX on Moonbeam. So come join. What have you been, de- Jonathan? I want to know what you've been degening on, man. That is what I would like to know. Now, is, is Jonathan a well-known D-Gen in these spaces? <laughs> no, no, I'm not a well-known D-Gen. <laughs> but I am driving. I'm driving, too. Are you driving to your your, your newest shitcoin? Oh, man. Shitcoins, I love them. Gotta love shitcoins. No, I'm, uh, I'm uh, doing some uh, Amazon driving right now. Ah. Uh. Right on. So uh, at work. Yeah, well, kind of, kind of at work. I'm getting there. Um, <clears throat> the uh, thing, I, uh, the uh, projects that I degen into, say, is um, I usually degen into things that have uh, function. So the current one that I'm doing right now, especially because I can double and triple dip my time, is a project called Hive Mapper, which is. Um, just creating a, yep. a Google Street View, whatnot. Anyway, I, um, I I like doing that because while I'm doing the Amazon, I've got their dash cam cruising at the same time. And uh, honestly, Amazon pays really good. And uh, But the rewards from Hive Mapper, as long as I'm in a metro area, uh, the rewards from Hive Mapper are uh, as much or more than I make from Amazon. So... I like the functional functional projects where I can actually do something. Jonathan, have you? Uh, I know Hive Mapper. I, I I did not buy one of the cameras. Um, uh, you know that's one of those pieces on that. But uh, I do Dimio, and I used to do I used to do he, uh, mobile helium, and uh-huh. uh, but. Uh, uh, gonna be also uh, also part of pollen uh, for the decentralized cell phone stuff. Oh, what's the uh, what's the uh, pollen one? Where can I look at that? So uh, it's a Solana project uh, as well. Um, basically, it's decentralized cell phone service. So part of uh, Solana's partnership with Helium and T-Mobile. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're uh, Nectar and. Uh, is one of the the main providers almost like so you can do a a, a, a basically a, a cell phone tower node almost uh, that uh, uh, sort of like helium proof of coverage mm-hmm. pays out pays on that um, and then uh, yeah there's a couple other ones like nodal as well and then Dimio for driving as well because uh, it just takes uh, uh, driver data. Um, and then, you know, I love the fun- funness of uh, coin. Oh, coin. Yeah, I've been doing coin for probably like four years now. Me too. Yeah. Got a shitload of those. <laughs> yep. So I like the concept of uh, I like the concept of coin a lot. Uh, it'll be interesting to see 
uh, if one, if they can, uh, if they survive, and then two, if they have uh, adoption. Yeah. Well, what's really cool is so the SDK for Coin is open source. So you like you wanted if you wanted to make a um, a geospatial game, play to earn game, you can use their SDK overlay map. And like basically make a map of the earth and you know people could mine coin network without even really knowing it and like mm -hmm. it could be converted to whatever game token you wanted to make or almost like that oh that's that's actually an awesome concept i like that yeah i don't I, so. um the, the coin after like say my first 12 months of doing it um, I stopped like learning about or keeping track of what they were doing and just mining the to like I got the little keychain holder thing and um, just mine the mine the token. Okay. So yeah, I, uh, I, I don't have the Bluetooth tag. I have the NFC card. Mm -hmm. um, that way, I can just you know people can just tap it and, and download the app. That's cool. Yeah, that is cool. So, I'll have to look at what what was that thing the cell phone thing called? It was called uh, nectar and pollen. Yeah, that's how I originally found out about Hive Mapper back in um, April, March, April. Um, was yep. through helium because I have <clears throat> I've got about uh, forty one uh, helium devices uh, running around Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the Hive Mapper thing. I uh, just got. I got one. Uh, my first one. I just received number two, like yes, yesterday. Okay. Um, but I made back made back my money. It cost to buy two of them in essentially a week and a half. So uh, we're uh, getting a, a run uh, ten box trucks in the Philippines for daily deliveries. So yeah. I'm getting uh, ten ten more units in the next couple of weeks uh, to put on all those box trucks. Nice. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't get too deep into farming out uh, helium miners um, to people. I was starting to work with, um, oh my gosh, Jag. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I still have my two helium miners. Um, I think they're, uh, oh my gosh, I forget what models they are. Um, the, the standard one that Jag and, and that uh, uh, Celsius, Celsius was putting out. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I've got, uh, I've got the, I think it's called Linksys or something. Uh, the Rap 2s, yep. uh, the Sense bots or whatever they're called. And uh, most most of mine are bobcats, though, uh, and I prefer the the bobcats. I think are the nicest nicest ones. I've had the least problems with those. I farmed out a bunch of uh, the helium miners, and then uh, you know when when everything like went way down, like they don't really do much uh, in terms of returns right now. Um, yeah. But I just everybody that has them is kind of like, you know, at least connected to me in some way. Like they're not just randos. Uh, yeah. So when everything went down, I just called everybody. And I was like, Hey, yo, can't pay you 25 bucks anymore a month. I'd appreciate it if you kept it up, but if not, I'll take it back. And, um, a hundred percent of everybody just fucking left them running. Yep. So they're still out there churning me five cents a day. <laughs> hey. Get, collect collect that helium um, yeah. you know it, it's one of those things where you know it, it sucks that helium couldn't figure you know well it, it's I guess it's not it doesn't suck they um, you know they sort of figured it out that um, to do what they wanted to do they had to, to, to merge over somewhere and, and they found that best choice in Solana um, Nodal did sort of the, the same thing where they used to be on XLM, but then um, they decided that they wanted to make their own uh, parachain. So they got a polka dot parachain and they won the, 
they got like the I think it either the seventeenth or the twenty seventh uh, parachain option slot. Okay, yeah, I uh, I have Nodal on Nodal on my phone. Um, yep. I was just never really sure what the funk. Uh, I never got into it. Somebody was like, "Hey, download this," and I was like, "That looks cool," um, but I have not gotten into it. Uh, it's it's just a Bluetooth scanner, um, you know, and so. Uh, but uh, one of the things that sort of sucks with it is the the app is a you know legacy wallet type of thing, mm-hmm. uh, and so you have to get a Polkadot JS uh, desktop wallet and add, um, you know, add that wallet in to be able to transfer it to uh, anything else. Got it. Yeah, I just open it up every now and then, and it's fun to watch, like, the little coins or whatever, ding, 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 uh, yep. when it hits a Bluetooth uh, device. So, yep. yeah, I've been, I've been uh, doing that, I think, for about uh, uh, eight, or, eight or nine months maybe I always uh, it's hard uh, after you get over a certain age it's hard to keep track of uh time so i just go by like projects like i did this one about when i did that one yeah i'm hitting some mountains so i might um i might cut out okay yeah uh tb uh or, or denny uh any questions on on uh sort of what me and john have been talking about for a second Nah, nah, just listening in, man. It, it is the fun stuff. Uh, Jonathan, the other good one is uh, Demio for Drive to Earn as well. What, uh, what, what, uh, what's it collecting or um, what's the function? Uh, so demo token. So basically it becomes an intermarry between... Um, oh my gosh. Sorry, I've been driving... Intermarry uh, middle person between your in, your car's information and the uh, manufacturer. Um, so basically, you get all of the stats, uh, at, you know, data that's processed through your car. Um, if your car isn't a smart car, that it can automatically upload that information, like uh, like uh, OnStar, they have a OBD2 plug-in version. Um, and uh, they get collect and aggregate uh, all of your data. Um, but then if insurance companies want it, the insurance companies uh, stake a uh, token and you're basically paid for your car's information. But then they're also now responsible for that information. So if anything bad happens with it, whether they let their system get hacked or something like that, then their their stake gets slashed, um, and so you're ba- basically ownership of your personal data from your car, monetizing your data. When I when I look at projects or get involved in projects, it's usually for uh, business purposes. So I always yep. look at, at scalability. That's why I like Helium, uh, Hive Mapper, anything that I can scale. Uh, yep. can, you, uh, can is there any way to scale that? Yes, same same thing. They have fleet model set up setups. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll have to. What, and what is it called? Dimio. Yeah, I I pronounce it Dimio. Uh, D I M O. Oh, oh, D I M O. Okay, cool. Yeah, when I'm not driving, I'll uh, I'll uh, tag, I'll uh, bookmark that to to look into. I like yeah. these. Uh, I, I I really like the group. So, I uh, got heard you guys talking about like rugs and stuff like that, and so uh, when I look at crypto, when I look at crypto projects, it's almost like I look at uh, the stock market. So when I buy a uh, stock, uh, I usually look and just see the health and if the company is going to be around, because then I don't care about. Uh, you can invest long term because I don't care about the stock price. What I care about is the company not going out of business, right? Because then you can buy the dip because it'll be around. Whereas uh, with these crypto crypto projects, if they rug, like they're gone. 
and so is your investment. You can't buy the dip because it just dips into oblivion. Um, so when I when I look uh, when I get involved in a project, it's def- I definitely just get involved in projects where I can see that it at least solves a business to business problem. That's my favorite one right now is B two B solutions. Because we don't really have mass adoption yet with consumers. So B to C solutions, like say the Solana stores uh, some you were talking about. Yeah. Um, B to C solutions. There's not mass adoption, so you can't have B to C sustainable B to C solutions yet. So always just look for B to B. Um, that then the business is just still providing Web 2 B to C solutions. But they're utilizing Web 3 on the back end. Yeah. Um, you might like Casper Network. Um, uh, with they're, they're working on B2B, um, but uh, more like, uh, um, I look at it like more as like uh, I2B. So instead of business to business, uh, infrastructure to business. So providing that network, like, so like one of the things that Casper Network is working on, one of the partnerships they're working on is like Cisco. Uh, mm-hmm. So then it will onboard all of Cisco's user, uh, uh, their customer base. They don't need to know they're on blockchain, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but that's how they're going to get their 500, their 5 million, 500 million users uh, is by onboarding one client to provide infrastructure support. What, what chain is Casper on? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's its own chain. Um, but oh, okay. also, they yeah. Got it. I'll look at that one, too, because I love infrastructure. So in uh, yep. for Web3, uh, as soon as they're, like, uh, you know, the world's, the solutions that Web3 offers uh, to the real world is just numbs my mind. There are so many great business solutions that can only be offered through Web3 uh, utilization. So I really feel like the guys, um, the guys that were building like the first cell phone networks, that's us yep. right now. And those families are uh, beyond <laughs> wealthy because yeah. uh, and, and one guy, one guy was like, I didn't know what self sometimes I feel like this guy. Is like I don't know what cell phones were. I didn't know anything about the technology. Like I'm, I'm semi-retarded, so there was no way I was going to learn about it. All I knew is that I loved Star Trek, and cell phones really looked like this, the, those little devices that they talked to each other in Star Trek, and that's why you know I put a million dollars into cell phones like back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> So I sometimes feel like that with Web3, all the technical, all the technical hoopla, I'm never going to be able to wrap my head around. That's why I only, uh, my deciding factor on uh, where to designate funds is B, I just look at the B2B solutions and if it's scalable or not. And if I can participate actively, those are my three criteria. Yeah. Um. Right now, the, the main thing that we've been sort of degening on tonight, well, that we've been degening in for, I don't know, uh, Denny, how long ago was Genesis? October 9th? I don't hear you. I don't hear him either. Nope. Now I heard. Now I heard you, Den. Denny. So Zen, Zen's a token that we've been degening in. Where it's right now, um, there's no utility really, other than for trading, you know, itself. Um, but there's no pre-mined tokens. Um, and sort of brings into that self custody stuff. Um, mm-hmm. All tokens are brought into existence the same way by users. Um, the DGEN play has been ba- bat- lately has been batch minting. Um, so it's a two step process of 
uh, uh, both, uh, you know, you have to go in and claim for how long you want to, uh, mint, you know, how many days you want to have working for you. And then, um, you know, let's say you pick five days or you pick 50 days or you pick, you know, 300 days on that day, you go and you claim your token, mint your tokens into existence. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of them have been done that way. And then it's all been community driven, uh, providing liquidity and, and nothing on the team side. Um, but getting ready for, uh, creating a, a dev net is out, uh, to work on, you know, creating their own, uh, own chain. Um, and the tokens out on 10 different chains right now. So no B2B yet other than, uh, as a commerce tool. Okay. Well, that's something that has, uh, <laughs> you know, anything that can make commerce easier or smoother is, um, a winner in my book. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. Have you, uh, uh, have you been keeping track of ordinals lately? I, I, I've heard, I've been so busy uh, with, in the Web 2 world, uh, I, bought a, um, I bought a house, I turned my old house into an Airbnb, so I've been having to, you know, uh, get that ready. So uh, when ordinals came out, I'm just winding down like, web two sucking up my life and getting back into web three i saw ordinals but i didn't really get get into it like what they were what they do who wants them and why they're important yeah um the 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 tldr um a process you know sort of using um uh you know vitalik's uh, ideas of coloring coins and being able to track them um basically being able to uh almost inscribe on satoshis on sats um and and rearranging block block formation so that um a larger piece of data can be held within one block um as it would be all congruent um and then uh from there uh ba like basically almost being able to tie it to ipfs to have one sat be like almost an N inscribed with like an nft almost um and tied to an nft um and so taking bitcoin and, and what bitcoin can do being able to identify uh specific satoshis for tying for tying it to a, a third out an outside source um so that it you know can almost be considered specialized okay that's uh that's actually a pretty pretty good explanation i think i can wrap my head around that you know um if you i don't it, man it, it was a couple of days ago um, I posted a link. Um, I posted a link on uh, uh, ma the main ordinal theory uh, documents and, and like the easy read of it. Um, that allows you to sort of break that down um, and, and understand it and see what it's about. Um, you might you'll be able to find that in my timeline. Awesome. I'll, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look for that. Luckily, I follow you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I, I, I like your strategy of staying awake for the midnight drive by uh, holding a Twitter space. That's a fabulous oh. idea. I've been, I've been, so this is a, this is my daily show. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. Um, the reason it is, so uh, it is, Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen. This is episode 189.3. Uh, the point means uh, it is the third space in a row because uh, Twitter rubbed the first two. Oh, got it. Got it. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're being recorded. Yeah. Uh, so is it this time of day, like, you know, the butt crack at night? Uh, no, usually, uh, I, I, so... 
I keep saying that I'll move it back to a daytime show because it used to be a daytime show. Um, and I literally have it blocked out on my calendar um, to do it every afternoon at like 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, but uh, with how busy the days get with having to, you know, trying to work with other projects and um, doing things, it, it sort of like falls to the wayside. Um, and so it usually ends up starting at 1130, uh, EST. Um, but it's usually 1130 wherever I'm at in the world. Got it. Yeah. I was going to say, if your show is at like, you know, this time of day, I, unfortunately this will be the only one I'm on. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I, I, I normally, I am normally asleep. Yeah. Um, it will be going to like daytime during East Denver um, because I, uh, one of the things that I do a lot of is interviews with founders and, um, and projects. Um, and so I'll be doing a lot of coverage and stuff like that while uh, at East Denver. So um, there'll be a lot of cool stuff there uh, interviewing founders and projects and devs. Um, you know, we've been talking, uh, you know, CK roll up stuff oh. and, and a lot of pieces in that. Yeah, that's what, um, when somebody, like, wants to get into Web3, um, you know, they ask me my advice. Uh, what I tell them to do is that the real the real alpha for 2023 is going to be IRL. Uh, just go to IRL events and start networking. Uh, I think the, you know, with the bear market and everything that's happened, um, I yeah. think that a, a lot of the cool projects that I know that are being developed... Um, they don't advertise and nobody knows anything about them uh, because they don't, they just don't want the visibility of uh, people like DJing in or calling them rugs when they're not, or, you know, being too early. So there's, you know, there's some hype, then the crash and they got to try to build out of the crash. So I think the real alpha for 2023 is IRL. I, I agree with you. Um, uh you know, um, 100%. Um, I, I've been on the road for the last almost year and a half, uh, for, for projects and stuff like that. Um, you know, going event to event to event last year, I hit, uh, roughly 62 conferences and who knows how many side events and one day, one day or one night events and stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, but, uh, I help uh, host events and, and projects with stuff. Uh, I do a lot of stuff. You know, I've been in this space for 11 years almost. Got it. Got it. Um, just a ran random question. Have you, uh, have you heard about uh, Fight Capital on Solana? I do. I, I, I'm actually good friends with John and Johnny, and um, I actually help promote that. And uh, I actually... Oh, no shit. That's yeah, why, that's that's why I got into it because uh, I love fucking Johnny, bro. So he was like, "Yo, I'm doing a project." I was like, "I don't know, give me five. I don't even care what it is." He was like, "Do you like wrestling?" And I was like, "Not really, but I'll still take five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, uh, that is, you know, that's part of what I actually use is uh, my some of my what I do some so some like random marketing for projects is um, I'm like. You, you you use his uh, billboard? Yep. Oh yeah, he's like, hey, you know, you have some hours on my billboard for free, and I'm like, oh yeah, well, I'm just gonna, uh, don't tempt me, bro, because I'm just gonna put up a dating profile, your Tinder profile, and we'll see how many chicks hit on it. That is the same exact like when people are like, well, I don't really know what to do with it now, and I'm like, you could put your Tinder profile on, as a QR code, and I can put it up there for you. <laughs> yeah, bro. Um, uh, do you, do you, uh, do you hang out? Do you know any of the other, uh, Johnny, like Johnny guys he hangs out like with, uh, like the toy shack and all those guys? Yep. So I know, I, I know that Johnny, I was actually at Johnny, uh, Johnny's birthday, uh, in Vegas, um, you know, hang out at the nerd bar and, and help out there a little bit. Um, you know, um, uh, OM Gina, um, mm -hmm. And then, um, 
I do not remember his name off the top of my head right now, but the guy that runs uh, Zoltar. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, know. The, the Zoltar machines. Um, yeah, I, I haven't met that guy. Yeah, but um, I do a lot of a lot of cool stuff there. Awesome. What well, what a small fucking world, bro. One degree of separation. Yeah. Uh, it might have been one of like the uh yeah so gotten to help hold you know help hold space with like rob van dam um got to meet like cebu in real life and stuff so yeah that's awesome that's awesome anyway yeah i've got a i've got a five five uh fight capital uh whatever they are waiting for a reveal so i've got to buy some more so we can uh (laughs) help johnny sell out yep definitely so, but I've been able to um, send people Johnny's way just uh, with that billboard idea, right? Like, yep. um, uh, hey, you, you know, buy buy these fight capital tokens. They're like uh, WWE, like what? I'm like, yeah, it's WWE's the main attraction or should supposed to be. However, there's yep. this real life utility that your business could use right now. Yeah. Yep. So, hey, bro, I'm uh, I'm getting to my spot, so I have to uh, supervise this pickup. Um, but I'll I'll be I'll be hitting you up more. All right. Yeah. So awesome, and I'll I'll check out those projects and uh, let you know. Are you in in all those projects, Demo and uh, Nectar and Pollen? Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll hit you up if uh, I have questions, but I could probably I'm gonna. S- gander that i can probably take uh uh you know figure it out myself but i'll 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 see you around bro all right all right later later uh yeah no that's some fun stuff there um denny do you mind taking uh uh center stage for a second i gotta fill up on gas real quick quick and fill in the space yeah, sure, as long as nobody's talking here. <laughs> ah, you're not ready to crash. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, um, so what should I do? Sing, like, sing a song or something? Yeah. Um, Maybe did you TV, watch the... well, I wonder if TV's around. Maybe him and I can chat. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and we'll bring knowledge up. Uh, knowledge.org. Oh, hey, what's up, knowledge? Um, as I, I'm going to go on mute for a minute and, uh, Denny, I am going to invite you to co-host. Oh, Doug, come on, man. Don't put me on that spot. I put you on that spot. <laughs> oh, shit. oh man. Do I get a badge or something? Yes. You get a badge. I will send you, um, uh, I will send you a link for a PO app. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yep. You met player one taco. So I'm going to go on mute and I'll be back. TB, I sent you an invite because you have been silent um, a little bit, but I've sent you an invite to co-host as well. Knowledge would love for you to come up and join us as we are on a, I don't even know what time four, five hours now um, over three, three Twitter spaces. So I'll be back in a second. Oh, what's up, knowledge?
Hello, everyone. Hey, is that knowledge? How you doing, man? Fine, fine, Zen. How you doing? Very good, very good. How's your day? What's uh, what's on your schedule? Fine, fine. Everything is fine. Where are you from? Where am I from? Yes. I'm in uh, on the West Coast, U.S. Uh, Portland, Oregon, where it always rains, but actually right now there's a blizzard happening outside. It's kind of a one or two time a year occurrence. So, well, that is awesome. Uh, actually, I'm from Nigeria. So, how you seen the market? Oh, nice. You don't get much snow down there, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no snow here. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds nice. I wish I was there. <laughs> so how is she in the market? What, what about the market? I missed that. Yeah, I so said, how is she in the market? I want to make new friends, connection, and all the rest. The, the the crypto market? The crypto. Yeah, for sure. Ooh, I don't know. Are you are you basically just asking if we just started a new bull run or still in a bear or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the main point. Oh, uh, you know, I'm kind of undecided right now. I uh I had all my chart analysis done about eight or nine months ago and whether people want to believe it or not, I called it on the month within about two, two weeks, but (laughs) that doesn't mean shit, you know? So I don't think we're technically, we're not technically out of the woods yet. Um, I haven't really responded to the past couple of weeks. In well, fact, we've only been ranging the past month or more, actually. But um, I don't know. I, I uh, I've seen uh, I've seen break, fake breakouts before, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just not I'm not convinced. Like looking at a chart isn't going to do it for me. I, you got to consider fundamental stuff with you know the central banks and all of that stuff so um it's uh you know i'm still i'm still in the game but uh i'm not convinced yet but we all know you know once you're once you're convinced the 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 boat's already left the port right so yeah so that's where the risk comes into play Wow, that is awesome. So, like, how long have you been in cryptocurrency? Uh, have you experienced any other bull market aside this coming? The last one. How long have I been in crypto? Yeah. Oh, geez, how long has it been? It has it? That's actually only been a couple years. But I've had my eye on it. I've had my eye on it since uh, probably mid 2017. Wow, maybe a little wow. earlier. But I was I was playing around more in the foreign exchange markets. So I was okay. I was swapping central bank currencies, and playing that game. Then uh, you know I eventually got disgusted with all of it. And, um, you know, I, I, I kind of knew that it was all corrupt anyway when I got involved, and that was a bad decision on my part. I should have just got involved in crypto in 2017. But, you know, people learn lessons and move forward, and uh, here I am. You know, I learned a lot. 
Yeah. You know, a lot of the thing, you learn a lot of the same a lot of the stuff can definitely be applied to crypto, but um but we also got to consider that uh, a lot of crypto isn't really true crypto either. It's just, it's just kind of still playing that fiat money game. So yeah. kind of try to stay away from that kind of stuff as much as possible. It's, it's, it's hard to get away from the fiat game, but we can always make small steps in the right direction, you know? Yeah. Okay, like uh, for me, uh, I came into crypto during in 2021. So as a result of the market, so <laughs> I made some kind of funds, and you know, on back then, and the hype in cryptocurrency, the market, and every other thing. <laughs> but I definitely lose everything. So, <laughs> and as a result of the crypto crash, so I took that courage. Stay in the market, waiting for the next bull market to prepare myself, fix myself in some other project that would definitely give me some some good profit. Because what I saw in the last bull market, wow, it was it was awesome, and that was my first bull market, my first experience. But really speaking, bull market is 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 is, is, is so awesome. It's something. Is, Something you, you, you got not to miss. So I, I took that courage. I'm going to stay through the bear market. I'm going to prepare and take that courage. You stay to the next cycle. So that's what I'm waiting for. Trying to get my knowledge and prepare every other stuff. So that next book cycle is going to be something interesting for me. So these are your friends. Taco, TB. Hello. I, I missed your last sentence, sir. What was it? Say this, uh, friends. Taco and TB. TB Bishop. Oh, yeah. TB and Taco. Taco is on a long road trip right now. He's actually okay. hosting, this, he's hosting this chat, but he, he had to step out away from the chat for a minute to fill up his, his vehicle with gasoline. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> in TV, I don't know. He might just be sleeping. Like uh, uh, I don't know what's going, on. or he's just listening in. So it's just us for now. It's pretty late where I am too. It's it's almost three a.m. three in the morning. Wow. So I need to get going to bed pretty soon myself. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> it's very nice. Uh, for me in Nigeria, this this one p.m. Say isn't is, is the uh, digital currencies is pretty big over there in Nigeria? Is is it not? It's very popular. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, everybody want to get into digital currency in Nigeria because it's a kind of you know quick 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 money game skill this kind of stuff. You want to make quick money. It's in a short period of time. <laughs> so that is how everybody sees. It. You know, you understand crypto. Trend, trend and hype, every other stuff. You get in, you make the money, you leave. But most of them, once they come in, they kind of make the money and they definitely lose it too. So that's how it is. So I just want to make new friends, get connection. And so what you guys are discussing about? Like, what's the group for? Oh, we're talking about all kinds of stuff taco player here he's uh he's actually kind of a player i, I i've come to learn over the past couple of days he uh he works for stella swap which is uh, a moonbeam swap that has a bridge and all of that and uh he's, you know he has has connections in the in the cryptos in the crypto space and uh very very knowledgeable he's he's been in the space for I think he said 10 or 11 years, so pretty close to the beginning. And, uh, yeah, he's a cool guy, super nice, super knowledgeable, and, uh, you know. Um, I met TB. TB I met 
when I joined the Zen Crypto Telegram group, he was in there in the beginning. Okay. And uh, yeah, we're just kind of hanging out here and people are coming in and going and saying hello. And I honestly don't know. I, I think Taco's crazy if he plans on driving another 800 miles all the way through. But <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's it. It's a long drive. <laughs> I heard my name and I, I felt my, my, my ears burning. Yeah. I heard your name and then you heard crazy. I was, I was saying, I think tacos crazy. If he plans on, on driving all the way through tonight, all the way to Denver. Uh, no, l- lucky me. I have, I have an amazing co-pilot, um, that, uh, will be, uh, that's, uh, will be taking over for me, uh, eventually. Um, I think I, just filled up, so have 453 miles that I can drive to my next tank. Um, and I think I'll be able to get in about uh, at least 200 to 300 more miles before I should rest just to be safe. Because, um, yeah, I've been driving now for oof, nine hours. No, it's four o'clock in the morning. It's almost five o'clock in the morning and left... Wow. 12 hours, 12, 5, 16 hours. Oh, God, man, that's too much. I, I, yeah. I could only, I could do that when I was 18, like 18 hour days. That's like, I, I have a hard time with 12 now. <laughs> yeah, you're, an, no. you're an animal, man, an animal. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, it has been a, uh, Good drive so far. Um, you're you hit uh Denny. You you're hitting the or you're being hit by the winter storm. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of nasty out there, actually. But oh well. It's, it's it's funny. This you know three four inches of snow. This is going to shut down the entire city. Like it'll it'll never get it'll never get. Uh, uh, plowed or anything like that. People just go crazy and it all turns into ice sometimes. I, I don't know what the weather is going to do, if it's going to melt it and then freeze it, but the whole city is going to get shut down tomorrow for sure. A couple inches of snow. Nice. So knowledge, uh, I, I, I miss. I miss. Uh, you go by knowledge, or do you go by anything else? Uh, sorry, I was trying to fix up something. Uh, actually, you can call me knowledge. Yeah, but oh, you okay. call me Brett. Brett or you Brett? Call me yeah, Brad, Brad. Brad is okay. Okay. Right. Call you whatever you want me to call you. Uh, my, uh, my, my Christian name is player1taco.e, but that is a mouthful, so you can call me Taco. It's also a mouthful, but it's a good one. Wow. That is awesome. Where are you from? Uh, I was born in Alaska. Wow. Hey, hey me too. Really? <laughs> Denny. Yeah, Anchorage. I was born in Palmer, and I, I lived in Anchorage. Well, all right. Small world. Yeah. Sorry, knowledge. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I pulled you away from there for a minute. So, Saku, how's the crypto journey? Uh, my crypto journey is good. I have uh, uh, been in crypto for about almost 11 years um, wow. from when I first started in it. Um, in, in the most degenic way possible, I took over a, a computer lab I had access to and, and partitioned half the hard drives into Bitcoin miners. 
um, because I was running a sports book and uh, it allowed for people to uh, pay me better, you know? <laughs> oh, that, um, that is some. Yeah. And then, uh, yes. you know, and then I uh, got out of that, sold out of that. Um, and then got into, uh, you know, other things and worked for a handful of projects, uh, in marketing yeah. after wow. in around 2000, 2016 or so behind the scenes. Um, and then in 2018, I started making content, um, and, uh, yeah, sort of been, um, on that journey from there, work for, uh, Stella Swap. We are the largest decks on Moonbeam. And then I, uh, work, uh, uh, for, uh, Simplex and Banksa, which is Fiat to Crypto on-ramping solutions. Wow. Wow. Uh, via credit card or <laughs> Google Pay or Apple Pay. And then um, I work uh, contract work for uh, Hacken and Beat and and Surtech. and then I, I help with uh, VC funding and, and marketing and go to market strategies as a uh, almost as a badass is almost what I you know bdass uh, business development as a service so strategic advisor for companies and projects. Um, really work to help push forward education and onboard new people into crypto. Um, sort of like Denny was saying, you know, one of our one of the big things that we're sort of like degening on right now is uh, Zen Crypto. Uh, yeah. It's on ten chains. Uh, I don't know what your full crypto experience is and what chains you might work with or not. Um, <laughs> but uh, it is. Uh, I actually posted on the Jumbotron, mm, excuse me, I po posted on the Jumbotron, uh, the main website, faircrypto.org, where you can sort of learn about it, to read the white paper, learn about the team a little bit, and uh, the main founder of it is Jack Levin, uh, he was Google employee number 21. Wow. You've gotten a lot of experience in crypto space. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy to have you as a friend. So you've so, gotten a lot of experience in crypto space. I'm going to be happy to have you as a friend. That's nice and awesome. What is, what is your crypto experience? In, or what has your journey been? Yeah, uh, Actually... I've been in crypto since 2021. I came in during the last boom market, the last boom cycle. So, just fun back then. You know, <laughs> our major priority is to make money in crypto space. So, back then, I made some good funds. But actually, <laughs> I lose part to the market. So, I have to remain in the market trying to get some good knowledge to full up the next bull on coming. So that's, that's when I've been moving up and to and fro, searching for information and all that, searching for hidden gems because I'm good in, <laughs> in buying projects at the cheaper price. So that's my experience. Okay. We're doing uh, where, 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 in, where in Nigeria do you live? Yeah, I live in River State, precisely, Port Harcourt. Yeah, no, I, I was, I'm, I mute myself so I can hear you a little bit better. So I live in River State, State, precisely, in Port Harcourt. Oh, okay. Uh, are, you're getting ready for your, your uh, elections then, I, I assume, Correct. Knowledge.
That Twitter can be a B sometimes. Yeah, it can be. Um, knowledge, I didn't. I didn't hear uh, what you had said uh, about. Uh, uh, I, I know Nigerian elections are coming up, and I didn't know uh, if you're prepping for that, and, and how your how your village and or town is doing with that. TB, are you still around? Are you are you sleeping on the job? Denny, you have been doing a great job as co-host, even though you did not accept the role. <laughs> I know. I looked down and I noticed. Uh, I was like, "Yeah, it's all right." <laughs> You should push it. I, I can't should, take. I can't take this responsibility. <laughs> you should. You should push it. You never know what might happen. I, I wouldn't even know what to do if I did. All right. I don't even. I've never even done this before. How do you even do this shit? <laughs> you push the button. Yeah, I push the button. Is that it? So that's. It's just. Oh, I, I imagine you can like mute people and all that shit, but. You can. No, I've, I've never run a space or anything like that. I'm actually, when I found Zen, that was pretty much my like first. Exp I mean, I was on Telegram and Twitter, like poking around, but never had like, uh, you know, never had like an account or anything. So I've never been on on, on these. Uh, the, what do you call them? <laughs> Yeah. Twitter spaces, the, the social networks. Yeah, uh, yeah. I never had a Facebook account. None of that. I will, yeah, Facebook is overrated. Um, I do not have yeah, a Facebook. I don't have a Facebook account. Um, I have an Instagram. I have a well. Actually, I have a lot of. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Signal, Telegram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Discord, Favor, Twitch, uh, Entra, LinkedIn, Live Me Pro, Reddit, Pinterest, Eventbrite Organizer, Meetup, WhatsApp, WhatsApp Business, Slack, Zoom, Moonify, WeChat, Group Me, My Business, Bizabo, Uber, GitHub, uh, Fame. Relic tickets, Vimeo, <laughs> Smug Mug, Start, and Medium. Holy shit. You're a busy man. Busy, busy and then, man. And uh, Audio Labs as well. <laughs> that one broke the camel's back right there. <laughs> well, see, what what's really horrible is that I can't... Um, there's no, uh, like, one app to rule them all. Like, one app that would push, like, the same content out to all of the other platforms. Right, right. Okay. You know? Um, and so, like, a, a couple of the web web apps that I use, like, Farcaster, um, Favor, um, Entra... They're they're basically and um, unify their web three versions of social media apps. Like so, uh, I'm part of the ambassador program for Favor, which is basically like Instagram, um, but on chain. Um, and so I'm able to whitelist people for dot lens names. Lens that rings a bell. I looked into them for maybe ten minutes. I didn't really dive in though. So uh, it's uh, basically your social graph. Um, yeah, yeah. On chain. What do you think about it. Uh, I love it. Um, do you have a dot lens yet? Nope, I don't. All right. Well, we're going to change that. We're going to make your day. Um. We are going to do 
Oh, and then just so you know, one of the major responsibilities of co-host is to like, retweet, co quote, retweet, and comment. All right, I'm out. Here's my badge. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Boom. Favor. Tweet. And then post that in the space. Um, so, so you, I mean, obviously you're going to be busy uh, starting tomorrow for this Ethereum yeah. thing. But, uh, are you are you literally like generally running these like every night, or just kind of when you feel like it, or? I uh, know. So I, I run them every day. Um, they've just been pushed back to nighttime a little bit because like the day gets stolen. Um, and so uh, like, like when I was in Vegas um, during conferences, it was like around like eight o'clock to nine o'clock at night when um, at like the first event of the night. And I had a whole bunch of founders that I could interview. Um, I'd have to go back but uh, I think you might actually really like uh, episode 180. Um, uh, I did it. It was a Monday. So it was live from uh, uh, Crypto Monday uh, in New York. And I got to interview Dr. Alex. I'm going to butcher his last name. Hana, I think. it Because every time I, I hear it, I think of like Ohana. But it doesn't have an O. Um, he's this doctor that's, you know, he's been a doctor for like 20 years with a huge pedigree of, of services and currently works for, uh, the UN on, uh, working to incorporate blockchain and decentralized data storage of health records in third world countries and then move it to, uh, based off success rate, move it to the United States as well. Nice. Yeah. Um, so I got a quick little interview with him, which was pretty amazing um, to do. Um, but yeah. Now, does that and mean we'll, we does that you mean will we'll see we'll... up in the uh, Jumbotron? Uh, you will see uh, the favor link that will take you to that, you know, to download the app if the. You were starting to fuzz out, and now you're not there at all. Maybe just keep driving. Hopefully you push through it. I'll let you know if and when I can hear you again. Ah, there you are. Kind of. Ah, that's better. Oh, no. Spoke too soon. You still there, Denny? Yeah, yeah, it might be better now. <clears throat> ah, I Sorry, can hear you, you now. Uh, I don't know if you heard me when I said you were fading out. And no, I, for a minute there. I am in, um, I'm not sure what state I'm in right now. Oh, I'm in Missouri. That is right. 
Where in Missouri? I do not know. Somewhere on Highway 40. Missouri? Weren't you driving from, uh, from uh, Illinois? Well, so yeah, I drove I'm driving across and taking um, uh, a more uh, southern route across to get to like I seventy across to uh, okay. stay out of the the winter zone. Yeah, it crossed my mind right after it. Uh, right after I questioned you, it's like, yeah, he's probably not wanting to drive through uh, all that shitty weather. <clears throat> one of the one of the smart things ended up doing was was planning on leaving last night um, and hitting the road, and sort of glad uh, didn't. I'm um, instead caught up on sleep, um, and. Uh, yeah, um, ended up uh, missing a lot of the snowstorm. Just ended up having to drive through a lot of rain for here and there. A little snow, but mostly just rain. Now most of it's all yeah. passed. Yeah, that snow will slow you down. Uh, it's no good. Oh, wait. I was thinking Missouri's Missouri's not south of Illinois, is it? It is, is it more west? west. Yeah. Okay, so you're pretty much just doing a straight shot over anyway. Yep. <laughs> just uh, you know, maybe uh, an hour outside of St. Louis. Gonna be on I-70 hitting uh, Columbia soon. going to be pushing through what is it 5 a.m is it 5 or 6 a.m there it is 5 a.m right now Ooh, you might be able to get past uh early morning traffic and get through get through town in time yeah right now uh set for 11 more hours of driving to arrive in denver at uh just about four o'clock uh mountain standard time but uh have uh, one to two more stops um, for gas. No, let's see here. 400. Yeah, uh, one more stop for gas before getting to Denver. Yeah, you, you and your co pilot, you must be driving like a uh, car or are you dri in an RV or what? Uh, my, my classic Chevy Equinox. I don't even know what that is. A Chevy of some sort. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, it's a little bit... Um, oh, man. I'm trying to remember if it's a little bit smaller than a Trailblazer or a little bit bigger than a Trailblazer. Oh, all right. Well, the computer's right in front of me. I could just always look it up myself instead of asking you for a description and me imagining what it actually looks like. Chevy Equinox. Yeah. 2018 Chevy Equinox and I upgraded to the 2 liter version for a tow package. Oh, alright. We got like a like an SUV kind of thing going on here. Yep. Alright. And it is, it is, uh, it is my baby. Uh, she does not have a name other than the best. Um, I got her when she, uh, was just rolled off the truck. Uh, so had one mile on her and she now has 1000 or wait, no, 116,742 miles. It's uh, four years. See, it was twenty five thousand miles a year. Huh? Well, um, you got to remember twenty uh, twenty 2020 and twenty twenty one. I was getting about three days per gallon. 
um, you know, uh, about, I would now say about 60,000 miles I put in in the last year. Jesus, man. Yeah. And you're, you're just totally stoked being in that thing, driving that much, huh? It's yeah. happy with it. Nice. Happy, happy. Uh, she has a good utility. Yeah, I guess she's, you know, gotten you to where you need to go this time, so. Yeah. Uh, she has seen both coasts several times and uh, uh, even the Gulf of Mexico, so. Yeah. That's one thing I kind of miss is decent gas mileage. I, uh, I'm running a little Tacoma right now, and I basically went and bought it and then immediately drove it to the garage and started tearing it apart and, you know, uh, tricked it out, re-geared it, blah, 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 and, like, took it out on a road trip, you know, a couple months ago, and I just got back, you know, a few weeks ago, and it's... God, I'm getting like 13 miles a gallon at the best. Like, yeah. What was it? What was it getting before you uh, took it on the road trip? I don't know. I drove it about 15 miles into the, my garage and started tearing it apart. <laughs> oh, so so you might have been getting that. You just didn't know. Yeah, I imagine it was probably getting a little better. Okay, I got some. Big tire, bigger tires on it now, and I I re-geared it to a lower gear, so uh, yeah. the engine needs to work a hell of a lot harder to spin yeah. the tires as fast as I want them to go. So it hurt a little bit, not too much, but all right, yeah. Um, so uh, I think you might have missed you you might have missed part of this when we were. Um, I, I was talking earlier when we were when I was in the uh, NYC uh, chat. Um, and I think I mentioned it to you a little oh, bit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had uh, so Eskimo uh, had a really good idea to host a space in there for like two hour. You know, it ended up being like a two hour long space. Um, you know, sort of talking strategies and stuff, and like confirming different knowledge and then seeing who was, you know, if anyone was doing anything on fin uh, Phoenix or uh, on DB and sort of looking at that piece or, you know, who's getting ready for phantom. And, um, but one of the, one of the pieces that, uh, I was, um, received, uh, feedback from a teammate on, um, uh, fighting the good fight on, on, uh, getting, uh, convincing my, uh, my two main team members that I need to convince on getting Zen whitelisted. So it's like viewable. Um, maybe you can help me collect data and pull it into like a bullet point report. Um, th three main things. Well, uh, is, uh, to, uh, that I need to like sort of make reports on is, uh, why Zen is in a scam Ponzi, why they shouldn't be embarrassed to partner. That's sort of easy piece. Cause it's really, there's no liquidity pull. Everyone has to get tokens the same way. Um, the kinds of volume they produce on other alt EVM chains. So basically nine chains worth of data. Um, and then we can also pull that data off of like, uh, exchanges as well. Um, and then, so, so numbers and stats, weekly, basically or like since launch or weekly or what, uh, I, since launch for each one, you know? All right. What else? Those, like, those are the main things, you know? And so, um, 
that that's that's some of my those those are some of the things I'm going to be putting together for argument's sake, you know. Uh, well, not argument, but case point. Um, and, and I I have a few uh, I have a few cards in my sleeve that have nothing to do with Zen to like sort of pull rank on this, but at the same time, you know, it's one of those things where like. Let's just talk this out and, like, what's the point of being, you know, yeah. I don't know. I, I got, uh, I got some good, uh, I got some good things, but putting, getting all of that stuff together, I would love some help on. Yeah, I'll do the best I can. Uh, all right. Definitely. Have, have you ever been in contact with any of the, core team of like Jack or, or Zen Tzu ja- or Jack anybody? and Zen Tzu. Yeah. And I, like I talk okay. with, with Sun Tzu. Um, so, uh, and Sun Tzu and me have a, have to schedule a call, um, in the next few days, uh, to talk Moonbeam. Um, okay. He, the, he already know he already knows about that. Yes. Yeah. No. Cause originally, um, when, uh, you know, Zen first launched and, you know, it was the talk of what, uh, you know, what change should be next. You know, I was like, well, after, you know, Polly, you know, Moonbeam. And so then they launched, you know, BSC and Moonbeam at the same time. Um, and, uh, you know, we were in talk, like I had them in talks with, uh, our whole core, but there wasn't any documents done yet. Um, and there wasn't numbers of usage yet, like there is now. So I've at least been able to get open the scat, open the open the door for rehashing it. And I'm gonna be right. seeing my founder in person. So, um, yeah, I get to you know CT and yeah. Yeah, that's right. I just remembered you uh, that data you kind of compiled as far as. Uh users users of, of zen like the wallet the yeah. holders versus their uh their alternate chains that they like to use that's kind yeah. of interesting and you gotta that data that i gave you is now 10 days old or well technically it's now the 23rd so i you know that information was from the 11th yeah it's it's changed with me for sure so um where what uh you obviously would have a better idea where like if i want to start looking for volume for you um is there any specific specific routes i should take to to just get me on the right track a lot sooner coin market cap might be your best choice um because then it can show you the different pairs and the different volume the the volume on it um god did they even did they even show the all the other networks i i, I uh, never even get on coin market cap anymore i'll go look right now i'm not sure off the top of my head but i know they carry the contracts for uh for all of them and uh yeah so that's where you know um if i can get some help on, on starting a p a good document um I can fill in the, you know, the blanks if we want to, if you want to do, uh, start, uh, I don't know, uh, are you a Microsoft user or a Google user? Uh, it's Google. Okay. Uh, if you want to start a, a, a Google spreadsheet, um, either like via, uh, yeah, DM in, uh, uh, Telegram or Twitter doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, that's data we can pull together and and sort of show um, usage, holders and transfers and all of that. You know. Right. Right. All right, let me see here. I'm gonna hop on. Okay, I'm on CoinMark. I'm gonna f- let's see. I paste uh, Moonbeam's address in there and see what CoinMarketCap 
I'll try Binance first. See what I can pull. Uh, all right. So we got V3 pools, pancake pools. Yeah, this should be able to pull some stuff together for sure. And that's pretty much all there really is, right? And then I could the uh I don't know why like Binance or uh Mexi or any or isn't on here, but uh you, I think you have to look at uh um uh, uh uh what am I thinking of? Um under the regular Zen it might show it. Um Ah, my this Twitter's. I'm about to get rugged here again. I can feel it. Um, what was I just gonna say? Oh yeah, you just show them how much ETH has been burned to mint all this shit. That's all they need. <laughs> yeah. Well, and if we can, we can get a. So, um, sorry, man. Maybe I, my my thing uh, is jacked. So go ahead. I'll try to be quiet here. <laughs> okay, uh, and if I rug out, because this maybe what might be good is to talk to um, Zenmon. Uh, who who runs Zenmon? Is that DB Zen? No, that's Steve. I can. Uh, his name is Steve. All hail Steve. All the... What's that? Um, all hail Steve. Uh, yeah, what? Good for sure. What we what he might since he has all the chains, um, what he might be able to pull. One of the things is um, all the gas burned on all the networks, and what that looks like before the NFT launch and after the NFT launch. And so, because um, one of the other things that I'm going to work, uh, I have two different marketplaces on Moonbeam um, that I know. Um, and I'll to Nate. Uh, he's the the director of uh, business development, and see if there's a, a a favored marketplace that might you know show a little bit more favoritism to, um, uh, to partner with that would then be able to show uh, those Zen NFTs. Yeah, yeah. Um... You know what? You might be weak thinking of uh, what's his name, uh, like Web Three Lee, the guy who created. Um, let me look at it here. Zen Pub? Are you thinking of Zen Pub, where it has all those those I analytics? The... I do not okay. know that site. Okay, so you must be thinking of Zenmon. I'm um, not sure if he. I, I'm not sure if he's compiled all that kind of data or not. I was actually wondering about that a couple of days ago. If he plans on uh, just continuing to add to Zenmon, so okay. I can hit him up for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, because if anything, then um, what I can use, I can then use that same document. Um, to build partnerships with other, with the other layer ones that uh, are um, and EVMs and stuff like that for uh, favorable deals. Yeah, man, sounds cool. Um, did you? And then did you add me to the the Zen uh, Dev chat? I couldn't add you to it if I wanted to. Oh, okay. I was gonna ask you that. I'll. Uh... I'll hit up Zen Sue. Yeah. And uh, I think you probably belong you belong in there more than a couple other dudes do for sure. Okay. Everybody uh, in there belong 
everybody in there uh, belongs more than I do, though. I just kind of try to be a fly in the wall most. Of- well, don't. I, I tell the same thing at freaking uh, TB. Quit fucking underselling yourself. Underselling, underselling yourself can be, you know, the only person you're hurting with that is, is yourself. But um, sometimes, you know, it's those out-of-the-box questions that help redefine what can be done inside the box. As always, this is Taco Bites, your daily bite of DGen, episode number 189.3. Cool Zen. Moonbeam Ignite. We are going late into the night, driving across the country. Uh, we have one of our most steadfast friends, uh, TB Bishop, hanging in there. We think we're, he's in, we're in his pocket. Um, or he is doing something, or he's probably asleep. Um, amazing, amazing person there. Um, really going in with two hands deep to, to learn things. We are going to, uh, fight via DM. And... Today we've been talking about whitelisting Zen on Stellaswap.com. Uh, working with the team there. Uh, if you're looking to buy Zen, using MechC uh, to uh, get your hands on Zen uh, at a good price or at uh, the gas needed for other layers. Um, talking about Web3 education and learn to earn uh, Zen Academy. Zeneca, really good place to start. Great uh, newsletter as well. New DGen uh, stuff. Uh, Kwai Network. Um, check them out. Um, then Clopper. Uh, your NFTs uh, owning other NFTs. Um, faircrypto.org for all things Zen. Zen Crypto. And then uh, using favor, uh, on ch- you know, create to earn. And we have a uh, our great co-host back. Um, he has returned to Twitter after days and days of being away. You weren't talking to me that whole time. Uh, I was. I just sort of like. I gave you my 12 words. Uh, I to- Man, told you where D.B. Cooper's lost treasure was. All right, good. 
I literally just started my phone, like, like restarted the whole damn thing, reboot, pop back uh, on Twitter, and it looks like I'm still in your chat, and I'm not in your chat anymore. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I got as far to uh, as far as uh, hitting up Zensu or ET and sending a uh, invite link to the dev chat. But uh, okay, I don't know if you kept kept going from there or not. <clears throat> no, I, I saw I saw you rug. So just sort of reset the space, as uh, you know, those that might tune in at, at this weird hour of the recording. Um, I had fun with it, and then recapped uh, sort of everything we were talking about. Uh, the TLDR. Oh, right on. Um, but yeah, no, um, um, so like, cause two things that I can add to, um, a lot of the teams that are looking, you know, making protocols and stuff like that. Um, one is, uh, you know, bridges. So like if, like they are targeting different communities, you know, and like they're looking for overlap, they can be. Um, that safe space for, uh, you know, in- instituting a, a bridge that, you know, um, you know, works really good in um, swing.xyz. And so, um, and then there's incentivization for them to do that as well, um, as they can set a certain fee percentage as well that they get out of, uh, out of the gas fee. Um, or, and that they get sent to, to them. So it, it sort of helps that project out on as an ROI. Swing dot X, Y, Z. All right. Learning all kinds of new stuff tonight. Yeah. Wow. Uh, awesome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, that's sort of where, you know, so not only swing, but then, um, uh, if the, um, other piece that, that can be done is, uh, adding crit, uh, credit card for payment. You know, credit card to buy directly on this site. Um, yeah. On uh, swing. Well, uh, so swing. No, swing's just a bridge. Um, okay. We're gonna be yeah. Um, and then, uh, but no, with because banks. Uh, um. And so being able to uh, uh, partner them over, you know, so any project that wants to implement credit card payments or credit card for mints, if, it, if there's any uh, NFT projects coming out, um, you know, and so it could be a, a two-form piece to where their mint contract could be, uh, you know, buying, you know, part of it is... Uh, you know, paying for the con- paying for the NFT, but then the contract could also then use part of that fund to buy and then burn Zen uh, automatically. Yeah, everybody loves that. Yeah, but uh, one of the things that we talked that talked about earlier tonight um, was that. Uh, uh, at that one year mark from, from, uh, Genesis, um, uh, a lot, I, I expect to see a lot of, um, I personally think that there will be a, a large price drop just because of saturation, because a lot of people, you know, went in yeah. for those long mints. Definitely. Oh yeah. So, 
Yeah, there was kind of that. We were looking at that like very, very early on. It was just like a shitload of really short term mints. And then it just like dropped off into, you know, and then just went to the max term mints. And it's kind of starting to fill in now. But, you know, obviously those longer term, they're going to have an effect. I don't, I, yeah. I can't really figure out how, like, the data involved though you know it's like there's so many damn variables i mean obviously yeah. you can look out 440 days from now and determine determine how much is going on there but all the stuff in between and shit it's just like how do you do that i don't have the the technology to do that somebody does i'm sure but um I don't know. Well, I don't know if there. I don't really think that there's enough price data on Zen um, to give a, a real uh, a real. Uh, oh, that sucks for that car. I think they're okay. Um, and uh, you know. Uh, to give a true price prediction, um, you know, and who knows what how the market will will be, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good luck doing a price prediction with anything, let alone Zen, man. It was like, good luck with that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I usually I only do you know about twelve hour windows. Um. Oh, so, I thought you were still on the like the next year kind of thing. <laughs> it's like, ooh, um, I don't know. <laughs> no, when when I'm so when I'm doing TA, I do, um, I'll do about uh you know, twelve to twenty four hours out, um, but then I'll also do uh you know, uh you know an hour or so, hour and a half. Um, and I'll wait and see if it follows the pattern that it, that I feel it should. And, um, then I'll, you know, relook, um, just making sure that it still falls within the same pattern that I see. And, and that's when I'll, I'll, I'll go off there because there's too much, uh, I don't want to say volatility, but there's too many variables for who knows what, who's going to tweet what. So yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. I just I, I try to tune a lot of that shit out and just try to be on the longer game it was then, you know, but I, it's just like I, I can't I, I'm in it every day and I still can't wrap my head around you, you can't put it you, you can put it all together, but if you put it all together, it kind of starts contradicting itself in a way. You know, because yeah. there's just so, there's so many damn variables to it. It's like you just you'll just drive yourself insane trying to figure it out. Yeah. The well, the other the other piece that I like to point out is that we're using Web two market prediction tools. You know that um, yes, a lot of it is, is um, mathematics that you know. Um, semi fall in line but it usually really doesn't it's just sort of to give you an idea of where it could be and what it really does is just sort of actually show proof of where you know explaining what happened in the past um and hopefully that gives you a, a hint of what will happen in the future um and but you got you know these tools were created for markets that you know 9 30 to 4 30 uh uh, Monday through yeah. Friday, closed on the weekends and closed on holidays to a market that is open 24-7. You know, and... and yeah, I mean, that, just, just, the, just the burn variables alone yeah. with Zen is just like, don't even bother, just long-term mint and then everything else is <laughs> have fun, you know, <laughs> which I'm doing, yeah. but you know, I want to get my hands on some uh, some sort of Apex series before they're gone, but 
Um, other than that, it's just like, you know, maybe buy a little bit here and there, wait. But uh, right now it's still minting for me, so. Yeah. Um, uh, are you wanting to do an Apex yeah. on, what, what chain are you wanting to do an Apex on? East, East. Okay. There, I don't know. We'll see. We're past the 50% mark on those Zunicorns. I've got a pretty big chunk coming with, you know, kind of scattered about in the next few months here, but I might need to buy. I need to make the decision to just buy if I really want one. So we'll find I, out. I, um, check what price is the uh, prices on, on, uh, next C. I I think it's um I think it's pretty good to buy on there. I could be wrong, but that last time I looked at it, that's what I saw. Yeah, I'm not ready quite yet. But um you know, they're still running around ten grand liquid. It can still go down. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't have to have a unicorn either. It's, it's just, you know, they're going to, they're definitely going to, there's going to be incentives involved with, with them for quite a while. So I'd like to have something, something in my pocket. Yeah. I got, I think I got a, I have, I had a, a couple of them on, on, uh, open sea, uh, to see if anyone would, would buy them. Um, I got, I might put, post some of the OG polygon ones on, uh, on open sea. There you go. Those, those probably have some sort of collector value themselves. Yeah. Um, I, I, I must say I wasn't too stoked after that happened. I, I just, uh, I stepped away for the day. Yeah, I was just like, oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah. I I I feel what bad. I've been, I've been part of a, a ton of projects though, and that it's the uh, that that's the thing. Like that happens so often, you know, because um, you have to have. Uh, certain features written in uh, for testnet and you might miss all of the things you have to change um, going to mainnet um, so I've been part yeah. of huge projects that like mint worked 10 minutes before launch but then somehow you know a fault was found Well, look what the cat draw again. What's going on, Rome? I bet Rome had a really nice, good sleep. He's probably getting up to start his day now. Welcome, Rome. What's up? What's up, my Zentinians? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Yeah, Denny. I, I, you know, I, I know everyone is is super tied to Zenians, but I like Zen friends. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, that NFT thing. No, 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 not the NFT thing. Uh, I just think it sounds more welcoming. Zen friends. Oh, instead of instead of Zenians, they're Zen. We're all Zen friends. Yeah. F R E N S. Well, good morning, Zen friends. Good morning, GM GM Rome. <laughs> did some uh, did some minting on Avalanche yesterday. Oh, nice. he dipped into AVAX already. Yeah. That's Moonbeam nice. and AVAX now, huh? Yeah, man. Got, a, got about... Nice. 
at about a thousand watts on AVEX. It was a lot more expensive. A lot more expensive than uh, uh, a lot more expensive than Moonbeam. That's for sure. Yeah, it's about a ten X, right? Yeah. But I guess- are you are you prepping for Phantom? No. Or are you already set and ready? No, no, no. Honestly, I haven't. Um, I know Phantom comes out today, right? Uh, I thought it's Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Today. Am I right on that, Denny? I couldn't tell you. I'd, I'd have to hop in the Telegram chat, see if he said anything lately. But last I heard, it was like, hopefully this weekend. So... Let me uh let me double check real quick. Uh do 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 do. Um, is Rome's taco here? He's driving through the night, man. This guy's a machine. You're a driver, taco. Yep. Nice. All for two states, or what are you doing? Driving from New York to Denver. Oh, shit. That's, 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 that's intense. Yeah. Head into, head into Denver for uh, East Denver, um, Interlope, Wallet Con, Supermoon, uh, Dow Denver and uh, one other conference that I just got invited asked to come to um, uh, and do some media coverage for them. So, yeah. That's what's up. Uh, it, the, the website uh, Zen Network says December 30th, 2022. So... I'm thinking, yeah. Tell uh, someone was saying it was it was this Saturday. Yeah, it should be Friday or Saturday. Let me go look in the mod chat. I haven't been in there for hours now. Maybe something changed. I'm so glad I'm not a mod. It was fun. It's 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 nice helping people out. But it's definitely monotonous a lot of the time, so yeah. No, I I, I uh my my heart and my, my gratitude goes out to all mods uh for the amount of work that they do and how many times they have to repeat themselves. Um <laughs> I used to have I would have like statements sort of like cut and copied and paste on like a notepad um you know within notes so that i could just copy and paste the same answer over and over again yeah yeah i cut and paste a little bit here and there but um, yeah he's uh, in the mod chat he says uh saturday time to be determined so okay Uh, one of the cool things with the Phantom is there's there will be chance for uh, some of the Fibonacci. Um, I blocks. keep forgetting about all that. That's right. Well, uh, you got to remember. So the Fibonacci's is basically the previous number plus the current number. So sometimes yeah. it's uh, it's it's you know that number times a third. Um, yeah, they're 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 really easy to get very early, and then they just get basically impossible. The more and more and more, the yep. the prime numbers are the prime numbers are way easier to get. Yeah. Um, I had a website up that that was show, that I was able to pull uh, prime number lists in the block confirmation. Lo- you know, I started off at the block confirmation. Um, our current block, and then I was able to sort of time it out to see what other blocks were there to see if uh, I get one of those, you know, hit one of those. So, 
Um, I didn't even go check to see what block confirmations, uh, what block blocks I got confirmed on. Um, yeah. Where where are you located, Rome? I'm in Orlando, brother. Okay. Yeah, man, Sunshine State. No, I, I was in Miami in the middle of January. Yeah. Miami's wild. I haven't been out there in a while. Yeah, I was there for a conference. Um, and then... Um, might be out back in uh, Tampa and possibly Miami towards the end of March. Yeah. So, yeah. fun times. An hour away from Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Nice place. Uh, yeah, uh, I haven't been to Orlando since I was a youngin. Yeah, yeah, I like it out here. It's nice. It's it's, it's peace. It's less expensive yeah. than Miami, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, there's a huge huge Web three community uh, in Miami and just in Florida in general. Yeah, I'm I'm a little jealous of your son since I was driving through snow and rain earlier. <laughs> For real. For real. That's why I like it out here, man. It's even you the weather's beautiful. You know. Great for me to yeah. take care of my family too. I got my own business out here, so you know, it works out. Um right. yeah, man, so what do you what do you do? Yeah, I'm a barber if you by don't mind trade. Me asking. No, that's okay. I'm a barber by trade. I own a couple of nice. shops. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing it for the last uh what fifteen years. I own two shops in this area where I live at. So uh yeah, man. Nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh -huh. American, uh, you know, as they say, the American dream at its finest. Oh, for sure, man. I'm, I'm living it, man. I got, I got to be, be very transparent with you guys. Uh, it, it, it always wasn't like that, you know. Um, but I had to take my talents to South Beach, man, and I had to dig in, you know, literally dig in and, and uh, pull that talent, that God gift talent, and put it to work, man. And, and it was amazing. I right, look back. It's been 15 years, bro. Hey, you know, it. Um, you know, the people say, you know, pulling yourself up from the bootstraps, you know, I, I know that story. I've lived that story. So, you know, I, I know the effort and push through it. So hats off to you, man. No, thank you. Thank you, man. And uh, it's just what I do, man. And uh, I. Entered blockchain about two and a half years ago. Learned a lot about what we're doing now. I met you guys, and uh, I met Dennis in the first day of Genesis, and we ain't we ain't separated since. Ain't that right, Dennis? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good shit. We got a good community here. Nice to this meet you. Rome here. He likes to give me shit lately. <laughs> nice to meet you, Taco. All right. Yeah, man. Yeah, no. Um, uh, I joined Zen, you know, early, early on. Uh, treatment, and uh, I was uh, I was introduced to it by a partner um, over from uh, Poor Pleb. Uh, and she sort of brought, showed me into it, and you know, you know, me and uh, Jack of Hearts, you know, uh, yeah, saw eye to eye about, on a lot of stuff. Mrs. CK, aren't you? What? You mean Mrs. CK, Crypto Krill. Yep, yep, Miss. Yep, Crypto Krill. Um, Krill's pretty amazing, and uh, yeah. 
That's awesome. I, I like. I like what's going on over at Poor Pleb. It's it's yeah. What what Biscuit and her are making are are pretty. It's pretty, pretty fun. You know. So. Um. But yeah, no, it, and it and it was fun just sort of uh, being in on that those, those early pieces and stuff like that. You've been in the space for a long time, Taco, right? Uh, Eleven years, about. Wow. You know? Wow, that's pretty. That's good shit. Uh, you see a lot of stuff, huh? I I have. You know, been through a lot of it. Uh, you know, and uh, one thing I'm really good at stuff. Repeat that again. One thing you're good at is what? Selling stuff before it blows up. Oh, nice, nice. No, I well, like well, like before it pumps. Like, I, I'm I'm like the I I'm, I've always been like the. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll sell that. It's it's three x. I sell it and then it you know, fifty x is the next you know next week. Oh, that's yeah, that sucks. Eh, it serves the purpose of when I need it. Right, right, right. Well, because pro- I've learned that too on the opposite end, where you're so emotionally attached, and you don't take a profit because you know you think next week is going to go up. You know, and yep. you fuck it, and you get wrecked. You know, and and that's the story of of, of a lot of our lives in crypto. Um, profits, not profit, till you profit, man. It sucks. But it's true. I think we all have come, you know, have experienced that, you know? No. And anybody that's, that doesn't say that, it's, it's not being real. Um, I don't know if, if that's happened to anyone, but if, I mean, it's happened to me. Um, so I've learned my lesson, man. I mean, it, profit's not profit to your profit, man. It's... Yeah, no, it, it's... Uh... You know, taking profit is is one of the best things you can do because um, it doesn't make it like it doesn't disassociate it, but it takes it out of your heart and puts it into your head. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Now that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you get if you get your initial investment back plus a uh, plus a little extra, it's. Uh, a good thing yeah you feel good um you know but as i like to say you know as, as, as especially as it goes to like nfts um i like to uh call them as i see them and say oh that's gonna that's gonna do something that you you know you should buy that and then not buy it and then watch it do something um or i like to get involved with projects and and ride those nfts down to zero <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell me about Zen. <laughs> uh, so there's this thing, like if where you're there's Zen, the... man. I might. <laughs> um, you're Zen, I might have second thoughts here. <laughs> but yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, I know you said you were just getting back into Twitter due to um, due to Zen, but uh, did you ever watch uh, K Money at all? No, it no. doesn't really uh, So K Money makes a uh, makes a bunch of like crypto based TikToks and stuff like that, like you know, um, and. Uh, uh, he he did a did a video with uh, Steve Aoki because uh, there was you know a piece of, you know there was like a superstition early last year that any project you know that Steve gets into he's buying it at the top and it just goes down from there um, <laughs> and uh, so yeah uh, it's like he's like yeah I finally got into this super awesome project that I've been waiting and fomoing about forever and I finally got in. 
one of us. And then like Steve sits down to next to him. He's like, looks over his shoulder. He's like, oh, what's that? He's like, oh, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing, Steve. And, and then the Steve's like, oh, let me find that. Oh, I'm buying it. <laughs> you know? And he's like, damn it. Sell, sell, sell. It's, yeah. K-Money is the reason why I, I started making TikTok videos. Man, I want to stick around, but I'm fading fast. I gotta go to bed. I'll uh, I'll get get to looking into all that shit that I wrote down for you. And uh, uh, is your, I imagine your schedule is going to be pretty busy this next week and a half or two weeks, yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah, but I, I want to make time for this because uh, I'll be meeting with T this week. The, you know, Monday or Tuesday, I think he gets into town. Um, so that way, you know, the sooner I can do that, um, uh, the sooner I can put, you know, something together, the sooner I can, you know, present it. All right, so, dude. So you had... You had something set up with uh, Zen Su as well, right? Yeah, I, 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 I got a, I got a chat. So me and him have a. Uh, he he had a bunch of questions that he wanted to ask, and so um, we just gotta find a time to connect. All right, cool. Well, if I don't hear from you before then, just uh, well, give him your spiel, you know. Yeah, and uh, let them know I might be a little bit involved, like trying to pull these numbers together so that multiple people are working on the same thing and they don't even realize it. You know, they could work together; they have to. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, man. Because if we can, if we can put this together, you know, um, and then, so yeah, if you make a Google sheet. Uh, send it to me in, uh, what do you prefer, Telegram or Twitter messages? Oh, I don't care. I'll need to learn how to make a Google Sheet first. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> click and drag. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll call, I'll call uh, Jack and ask him for instructions on how to use Google. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought, though, he'll tell you how to, sh how, how to break it. <laughs> says well yeah. yes yes denizen i i actually uh created drag and drop i you know <laughs> so yeah no yeah, I, I, think uh, we'll... he has, I think he actually has like a uh a uh what do you call it a uh patent on drag and drop <laughs> nice anyway um yeah. all right man all right. If you uh, have any like cool tips and tricks, shoot me a message or whatever, and uh, we'll keep in touch. I'll keep my eye out for you on Twitter here too. Yeah, I'll uh, maybe you'll. Uh, I'll put together. I'll I'll put together a, a rough frame of a of a spreadsheet, um, just so we can sort of like start figuring out like, uh, and then I'll drop it in. Um, I'll drop it in Telegram just because I can, you know, that'll be a little bit easier. Uh, you use Telegram on your desktop computer? Yeah, yeah. DM me. Okay. Yeah, so I'll send it to you on, on uh, in Telegram. And then uh, uh, would you rather me uh, or just I can create a little working group. And then, like, if there's other people that want to join it or, or add to it, do you think, you know, add them in? Um, that oh, way. Oh, yeah. For sure. Spread the load. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be too too hard. You know, it's just like a time thing and, you know, yeah. like how crazy with numbers do you really want to get? You know, you want one number, one number for each day, you know, the whole, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> ah, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, you know, I'm, th I'm thinking like daily volume, uh, 
you know, daily network volume, um, pre NFT and then post NFT. So like, you know, what the, what the highest day looks like. So yeah, we'll, I'll figure out a rough frame and, and, and create that chat for us on telegram and yeah. Right on, man. I'll uh, try to get a hold of some other dudes and see if they got anything in the background that nobody knows about. Maybe they could spread the uh, spread the love. Definitely. Uh, you know. Um, yeah. All right. All right, man. Uh, yeah. Have a drive safe, dude. Don't. Uh, don't be crazy if you start getting tired. Just fucking pull over. Yeah, and, uh, I, I got a, I got an amazing co-pilot for that. Um, yeah, hopefully it's not your dog or something. You know, your your pet, your like your cat or something like that. <laughs> nah, nothing like that. I got, I got, I got a real person. Are they? Uh, they're able to just sleep in the car while you're chatting and driving and all that, huh? I uh, yeah, they they have my noise canceling headphones on. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah. Right on. We'll have fun at the conference, man. Spread the yeah. word. <clears throat> we'll do. Yeah, no, I'm I'm waiting to get a get information on a venue and I might try to doing a a, a Zen meetup there as well. So, Dude, that yeah. would be epic. I would almost consider driving out to Denver just to go to that. It'd yeah. be another. So, it'd be about a thousand miles around one way. But yeah, fuck, that's yeah. a long way. <laughs> hey, you can do that in two days. You well, not even two days. You leave on like a Saturday evening, and you'll get there like Monday morning. Yeah, I know how to do it. I got somewhere I can stay in Salt Lake even, so I'd probably do the 12-hour trip from here to Salt Lake and then boogie over to oh. nice, quick, quick day over to Denver. But I don't know. It's probably not going to happen, actually. It's, I'm kind of tired of driving lately. Yeah. But it's good to think of. Yeah, I need to figure something out on the West Coast over here, like fucking... San Francisco or Vegas or something. Hey, yeah, we do. You know, I got a bar in Vegas we can always use. So, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. There you go. But, yeah. All right, man. I'll, yeah, it's, uh, take it easy. Have a good day, Rome. All right, Danny. Hey, man. Thank you, guys. I'm going to head yeah. out myself. Taco, you have a good trip, bro. All right. Hey, thanks, Rum. You have a good day as well. Too bad you are not All in right. Denver because I need to get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys ever get down to Orlando, man? You make sure you DM me, man. We'll meet up. All right. Appreciate you guys. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Later. And that is how we end up wrapping up that part of the session of Taco Bites, your daily bite of DJ in episode point three. Um, man, we have going been going for a minute now. Uh, six, uh, seven hours maybe. I think between three spaces. So, uh, yeah, that has been a good day, um, for everyone. Um, Owen XX, I see you down there. Would love for you to come join up. Let's, uh, I'd love to hear about this Lambo Landers. I see, uh, you are uh, friends uh, friends with uh, one of my favorite coat wearers, uh, Doug. 
aka hype and uh I see uh let's see here. I see war dogs. Oh yay. Good Ada project there. Come on up. I wanna hear I wanna hear more about you and what you got going on today. I think uh, I think that's a good time to call it quits for the night. Seven and a half hours. Um, a lot of good people through the night. Just as a quick recap, the TLDR, we've sort of covered everything from Celsius uh, and the UCC. Um, what that clawback might look like after, you know, have to do some more research on that. See what was all, all the documents that were released by the courts today. Um, talk with, uh, uh, see if I can get a talk in with Simon to sort of break that down. Um, and see, see the whole view on that, um, and, and bring it out. Um, then it's also been a, a, a good day, uh, you know, in, in just the markets in general. Um, but one of the weird things that, that happened around all the eight, you know, stuff with Celsius is BitBoy Crypto, Ben Armstrong, sort of going off the deep end. Um, you know, I, I really missed Ben from the old days. Old Ben was good Ben. Um, what he's been doing now, it just worries me, you know, um, making threats to people is not, not what web three is about. And, um, yeah, um, called builders for a reason. And, and I don't see him doing that lately, which sucks because he used to be really good at it. Um, and then, uh, you know, also talked about Uniswap. Uniswap's coming out with a DeFi wallet, uh, in the horizon. Really cool to see, uh, Phantom Wallet, uh, released, uh, beta codes, uh, to turn their Solana wallet into a multi-chain wallet. Um, so that's sort of, uh, really cool. Was able to get, uh, an invite into that. Um, so that's sort of fun. Um. Uh, also really cool to see uh, what has been going on with uh, Beefy Finance and some new chain pieces that they're letting out. Um, some new pools, Camelot decks. Uh, we talked a little bit about Pulse Chain today and some of the stuff that Mintra, um, you know, doing NFTs and stuff like that. Uh, cover a little bit of everything on that. Um, then Zen, a lot of Zen tonight. We've been covering. Uh, Zen, you know, on 10 chains is launching, and you know, three chains so far have NFTs, and then Phantom Opera FTM uh, NFTs are launching on Saturday. Uh, talked everything about, you know, some B2B infrastructure projects uh, like Hive Mapper, um, New Helium, and uh, uh, Pollen Network. And uh, what's sort of, sort of being built out there, as well as Dimio. Uh, talked about MEXC and um, what they're giving is privacy for, you know, users, you know, to sign up via email only. So, uh, yeah, working about uh, talking about Moonbeam, uh, you know, first mainnet parachain of Polkadot and getting that onboarded into what you sort of see uh, hopping into their discord and, uh, you know, talking and requesting whitelist for uh 
for Zenpool. So really open to see that that push out and grow, and uh, it'll be really amazing to see that go. Um, uh, so we'll see that push out, and uh, yeah. One of the big things, uh, as always, you know, we want to you know remind everyone uh, of our words of wisdom. You know, uh, a closed mouth cannot be fed, and you cannot feed a closed mouth. And with that, we end on the best joke on the face of the planet. Uh, this is how we end every episode, and we thank everyone for listening in today. Um, and we will see you on the flip side. Uh, so the best joke in the world? Knock, knock. Who's there?